yeah first of all i would like to thank uh, especially ranjit kumar sir okay for this opportunity um, you know uh, to deliver to be a resource person for this uh, international conference okay and uh, i would also like to thank the organizing committee uh, because i want to why i want to thank them before itself is that because they have been in contact with me for the past 3 to 4 months and uh, whenever i have some doubt say they are they always get back to me right on time especially dr aarti i guess yeah uh, she is in constant touch with me and uh, whenever i have doubt she she used to respond uh, within 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 you know within uh, as early as possible so yeah uh, thank you so much once again for this opportunity and uh, uh, good afternoon one and all uh, shall we wait for i mean uh, shall we wait again? can i go ahead with this you just let me know yes sir you can proceed further any anyone uh, needs to needs to join uh, sir uh, they are in the session and who are just joining they will soon join in with you as well okay okay so i'll just i'll just proceed with okay with my presentation then right okay so yeah um today uh, okay, uh, uh, good afternoon to one and all uh, i'm dr sudeep bala uh, i'm a forensic odontologist uh, i've done my masters in forensic dentistry from uh, university of delhi which is in scotland uk Uh, i graduated in the year of 2014 and uh, after that i came back to india and i joined uh, in a dental college which is in hyderabad that is paninia institute of dental sciences uh, within a year of time uh, i i i uh, we have created a separate department of forensic odontology uh, because because um, because we understood and uh, because the police and the forensic medicine people do understood that the importance of forensic odontology and uh, they started giving the cases to us so for that reason um, because of the continuous exposure that we had from the nearby police stations the cases we get from the nearby police stations and uh, from the usmania department i mean forensic medicine department of usmania so uh, and uh, i've i've seen that uh, the interest of the students towards forensic odontology has been you know increasing over the, it's been increasing over the period of time so that motivated us to have a separate forensic odontology department so i've been um, i've been working since uh, 2014 it's i'm having a, a, an experience of uh, nearly eight and half uh, years okay so yeah uh, that's about me and um, today we're going to talk about um, dental age estimation okay uh, see i assume um, most of the participants i don't know who i mean your specialty backgrounds i assume we have forensic odontologists we have forensic medicine people and uh, i think both the faculty as well as the students postgraduate students um so i assume that okay uh, everyone is having certain knowledge about um, you know uh, dentistry okay so that's what i'm assuming so yeah today my topic is about uh, dental age estimation in children and juveniles okay so um the reason uh, why i want to talk about uh, dental age estimation is because as a forensic odontologist in india because i've been practicing it for more than 8 years so uh, we used to get we we tend to get good number of cases on age estimation because uh, especially uh, in children and juveniles okay so and um, see usually age estimation can be done both in adults as well as in children but when when you compare both of them uh, we we tend to get good number of cases in uh, of age estimation related to children and juveniles okay so you are going to learn more about this in the coming slides so i'm going to uh, discuss about different age groups in children okay so it's not just about predicting the age or estimating the age it's about predicting certain age groups of medical legal importance okay so what what parameters we as a dentist we evaluate uh, or or uh, we analyze what sort of parameters okay in uh, in the developing teeth so uh, how you how you how you going to you know uh, help the police Uh, when such cases were given to you, especially uh, as a, a, when they come to you for the sake of age estimation in uh, children and adolescents. Okay, so I'm going to discuss about that. So before before going directly jumping into the topic, um, I would like to talk about uh, little about okay. Uh, basically, uh, I, I introduce myself as a forensic odontology. But basically, who is a forensic odontology? So what is forensic odontology? Forensic odontology is nothing but um, it is nothing but overlap between dentistry and law okay so 
it is often a dentist will be called upon by the police or asked by the police so in some cases the police will come to you and give you a dental evidence okay so as a forensic dentist what my duty is to analyze the evidence prepare a report based on my findings i need to present it in front of the court that is the duty of a forensic odontology okay forensic odontologist so what sort of things a forensic dentist do okay so see um, what on a, on a daily basis okay not just on a daily basis basically what are the sub disciplines or sub you know sub categories in forensic dentistry first is identification of human remains okay so see basically whenever there is a dead body is there okay see and it, it cannot be recognized visually so you cannot make out the identity of a person by looking at it so in that situation what are the parameters that are commonly used by the experts the commonly used parameters are the dna analysis okay the fingerprint analysis and the lastly is the comparative dental analysis okay see if you these these three are called as the primary means of identification so for example when there is a dead body is there and it is totally burned beyond visual recognition so the experts will use either of these three parameters among these three parameters they might use dna they might they can they can use fingerprints as well as they can use tooth to identify okay but if you compare these three uh, i say forensic i mean comparative dental identification is the most fastest and most reliable i mean these three are reliable but when you compare these three dental identification is considered to be the most fastest method of identification okay because and of course there there is a catch here okay see it always depends on the availability of the anti mortem data but if the if the anti mortem data is readily available dental dental identification can be done and the identity can be revealed within a few days of time okay so that is one thing uh, I, that is one of the prime duties of a forensic dentist okay whenever there is an unidentified body is there uh, it can be identified using teeth that is comparative dental identification and secondly it is dental age estimation okay so see i am practicing like i said i am practicing here for more than you know 8 years um if you look into the first option that is identification of human remains um i can say that i hardly did not more than 10 cases of identification because uh because as a forensic dentist and for you to do a successful identification using teeth we always need to have anti mortem data okay for us the anti mortem data is nothing but the dental records so for example if the person has visited any dentist before and if that dental record is accurate and readily available then the identification using teeth will be a success okay but in indian scenario uh, it is it is never easy for us to get the dental records in the first place because uh for example if you go to a dentist who is practicing outside and you ask for the dentist for the clinical i mean dental records of the patients he might not give it okay because uh, we are uh, sad to say because most of the dentists actually uh, they don't have a habit of retaining the records for a period of time okay but when when we compare this uh, basically we have an statutory authoritative body called as dental council of india okay all the dentists actually work um you know under this dci that is dental council of india according to the dci every practicing dentist supposed to retain the records of the patients for a period of 4 years 4 to 5 years okay only once after that period of time they have to retain it in an electronic form okay but most of the people are not doing that and because of this kind of practice the dental records are not readily available and the identification cannot be done okay and uh, if you compare a practice uh, practice of a forensic dentist in western countries they do good number of cases of identification using teeth whether it is a minor disaster or a major disaster or a small accident or a big accident okay so they do good number of identification cases using teeth because they have a central um, database where the dental records will be retained for a period of time and they do have also set dental insurance okay so why i am saying is this because what i am trying to say here is that among these two options two practices of forensic dentist as a forensic dentist i have done a lot number of cases of age estimation because in india um, especially i do good number of cases on related to age estimation in children and juveniles because uh, it is sad to say that uh, according to the national crimes uh, bureau uh, most of the crimes were done by the children or the juveniles who are falling into the age between 16 and 18 years okay so in that cases it is it is very important for the police or it is very important for the court people or the judges to determine the age of the person because according to the age 
you know the convict uh, the person will be convicted okay so we need to determine whether the child or a juvenile is a major or a minor okay so we used to get uh, such cases it is not about uh, a murder case it is a, it can be a robbery case it can be a theft case it can be a, an illegal marriage anything okay so for such reasons uh, the certificate the a certificate which was given by a dentist that is forensic dentist carries a lot of weight okay so because of this increased percentage of you know the crime rate by the juveniles especially by the juveniles there is a lot of demand for for the forensic dentists as well as the forensic medicine experts i know they have to they have to give the a certificates okay so that is the reason so as a forensic dentist in india i have seen good number of cases related to age estimation than the number of cases related to the identification of human remains okay and the third one is bite mark analysis see um, this is something uh, see we all know that what are bite marks okay bite marks nothing but they are the injuries that are seen okay they are the injuries that are produced because of the action of biting okay see these are the most commonly seen injuries uh, because during the times of sexual abuse or any sexual assault cases or during the science uh, during the times of physical abuse okay see this is purely at the act of dominance okay when when a, when a person is trying to dominate the other person the most commonly seen you know external injuries are the bite marks okay so yeah, as a forensic dentist what we do is whenever the victim or a suspect is having a bite mark on the skin what we do is we try to analyze the bite marks we try to find out the culprit who has done this bite marks who has actually inflicted the bite marks okay so there are high there are very good profile cases i mean there are very high profile cases that happened in india okay for example take the nirbhaya case which happened in the year of 2012 okay in uh, on they have actually found more than 5 to 6 bite marks on the body of the victim and um, that in that case the bite mark analysis was done by a forensic odontologist from um, darwar which is in bangalore i mean karnataka okay so this is one this is one this is one sub category of forensic dentistry where which the forensic odontologist will be you know, called upon or requested by the forensic experts of the police to perform the bite mark analysis identification as well as the analysis of the bite marks okay but there is a catch here okay see uh, and at the same time bite mark has is under a lot of scrutiny these days okay that is that is that is different okay that's not related to this presentation but it is um, what i'm trying to say here is it is always important as a forensic dentist for you to use bite mark analysis wisely and carefully okay because there is lot of it, it is under it is under lot of scrutiny uh, in the past few years okay so that is one thing as a forensic dentist we do we do sex determination as well we try to determine the sex of the individual child abuse is something okay whenever a child is neglected by the parents uh, th there is it is often that the dental health of the child will be neglected okay so as a dentist we will we are the first person to come across such child abuse cases so in such cases forensic dentist will be called upon to look into this situation okay so whether the abuse is happening by the parents okay i like that so we have to investigate in such cases and there is some other thing called as keloscopy and rugoscopy keloscopy is nothing but lip prints okay so prints of the lips and rugoscopy are nothing but palatal rugae patterns okay so the literature says that these both patterns can be useful to identify the individuals okay so uh, uh, some of the literature suggested that there are very uh, reliable tools of identification see for example if if teeth are not available dna is not available etc etc if there are no other sources of identification you know we can use teeth uh, i mean these two parameters that is lip prints as well as the palatal rugae patterns to identify the individual but to be frank personal i am not a big fan of this lip prints and rugoscopy is because see uh, it is basic thing okay see for you for example let's take dna or fingerprint or dental identification to do any of these things we need anti mortem data as well as post mortem data for example take dna we have anti mortem data is nothing but we try to ask the family family members for some blood samples and we'll compare that with the dead body that is anti mortem and post mortem comparison for fingerprints we have fingerprints in the database that is anti mortem data and we'll take the fingerprints from the dead body that is post mortem we'll compare and for dental means anti mortem dental records and post mortem examination of the teeth so we have these things but when you look into these two things that is lip prints and rugoscopy where in the life we are actually taking these lip prints and storing them so we don't basically have these lip prints stored in the which were taken during the life of the person and storing them somewhere okay so um 
they can be they can be i mean according to the literature that was you know published so far they have suggested that lip prints are useful but so far there is no such database in existence where you can go and get the lip prints in order to do the identification of an individual okay so this is one thing as a forensic dentist we do and forensic facial reconstruction okay see uh, basically this is not just a sole duty of a forensic dentist because basically it is a multidisciplinary approach okay so where in which um, a uh, forensic artist will be included forensic anthropologist that is bone specialist will be there forensic dentist will be there so this is basically a duty or you know of of multiple you know specialists from multiple disciplines okay so whenever if and uh, not in every case they do that okay see when in case of high profile in, in some high profile cases where no dental data is available no dna is there no fingerprints is there but they have to do the identification in such cases they'll do the forensic facial reconstructions so that is one thing we do and finally expert opinion as well as you know also often there is something called as dental frauds okay um, now we have these consumer courts and all uh, for example if a patient is not happy with the treatment that was done by a dentist so uh, they, are, they are they are often ready to sue the dentist okay in such cases as a forensic dentist we will be looking into the case and we try to you know give a report based on that we will be providing our expert opinions so whether the fraud has really happened or not okay so basically these are the duties of a forensic dentist okay now in the today's lecture we are mainly focusing on the dental age estimation in which uh, how the age i mean uh, especially focusing on the children and adolescents okay see um see basically of course when we talk about dental age estimation what we are mainly focusing on is are the tooth okay or the teeth see we know that teeth are better preserved than any other parts of the body because we know that no matter uh, for example let's imagine the body is exposed to higher temperatures okay so the, the, we all know that even the body is exposed to higher temperatures approximately 1100 degrees centigrade there are chances for us to have the teeth retained okay so still uh, uh, even though all the other body tissues are disintegrated here uh, we have teeth readily available okay so for us to do something try to extract something and that teeth can be used for us to carry out the identification of the individual and also even though the body is totally decomposed or putrefied okay so in such cases tissue is not readily available so we have this teeth that are readily available okay for us to do uh, any sort of identifications okay to carry out the identifications and uh, when we are talking about age estimation see uh, we have certain parameters as 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 a forensic expert, we always look into different parameters to estimate the age, okay? So the most commonly used parameters while we try to estimate the age are the bony parameters as well as dental parameters, nothing but tooth. So when I talk about bony parameters or skeletal parameters, we have hand wrist bones, we have a, a pubic symphysis, other, all other bones, okay? So clavicular bones, etc. So, but when we compare both mineralization, bone mineralization with tooth mineralization, I'll say that there is a, a superior i mean there is an advantage with the tooth mineralization than the bone mineral because usually the development of the skeleton or the skeletal bones are usually influenced by the factors such as nutrition or environmental factors for example if the socioeconomic status of the individual is poor it obviously affects the nutrition of the child if the nutrition is affected, obviously the development of the bones will get affected. Okay. In such cases, you cannot rely on the bone remineralization to give the age of the individual. On the other hand, if you take tooth, okay. So basically the tooth development is not at all influenced by the nutrition or the socioeconomic status or any other environmental factors. Purely the tooth development is influenced by the genes. So this is the main advantage of, you know, uh, when you say, Dental age estimation is superior to a skeletal age estimation. This is the reason, okay? Because the tooth development is not influenced by the um, factors such as nutrition or socioeconomic status or uh, environmental factors, okay? So basically how we estimate the age is that, uh, let's say uh, till uh, we have total of 32 teeth, right? You all know that. And uh, till the age of 20 years, we have this, the tooth development takes place. That is the tooth calcification or mineralization of maturation. So what we do is that we look into the maturation of the teeth or the calcification of the teeth to determine the age in juveniles or children, okay? <clears throat> then what parameters we use 
See, because by the age of 20 to 25 years, all the tooth will be completely matured. Okay. See, there is no more development happens. So once the development is done, how are you going to estimate the age of the individual? So after the tooth formation and eruption, age can be determined by the progressive changes that happen in the tooth. Okay. So obviously with increase in age, there are certain changes that happen within the tooth. Okay. So we use those changes that are called as progressive changes or regressive alterations they're called as. So we use these changes to estimate the age in case of adults. Okay. So what are those factors? We'll see in the next slides. So basically, what are the different types? See, uh, when you are as a forensic expert, you, you use different types of terminologies, okay? So some people say chronological age, some people say skeletal age, some people say tendal age, okay? So what are these things, okay? So partially, what is chronological age? Chronological age is nothing but the exact amount of time passed, okay, since birth. That is the exact number of years, the exact number of months or the days which were passed, okay, since birth, okay? That is called as the chronological age. See, for example, uh, you have taken an OPG to an individual now, okay, that is called as date of exposure or the date of radiograph taken. And you know the date of uh, date of birth of the individual. So if you subtract the date of birth and the date of, if you subtract date of birth from the you know, date of exposure from the date of birth, you will get the exact chronological age. So chronological age is nothing but the exact number of years or months or days that were passed since birth of the individual, okay, that is called as chronological age. Everyone has a chronological age, okay? And we also, the, uh, in forensic literature, it was also told that age can be assessed based on the height and weight of the individual. For example, if you go to uh, any, any children's hospital, okay, they do have certain charts, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, a four years boy is supposed to have so, so and so height and so and so weight, okay? So, these are all called... Uh, see, this, this growth charts indicates the age of the individual, okay, they are supposed to be, but this is actually uh, in, in forensics, uh, this, this is not actually recommended because like I said before, the nutrition effects, such, I mean, uh, the lack, lack of nutrition, socioeconomic status, environment factors definite ha definitely have an effect on this both parameter, that is height and weight, okay. So, um, Previously, they used to say that age can be assessed based on height and weight, but it is not basically recommended. Okay. The third one is skeletal age. So when you do, when you um, see, uh, you, when you try to estimate the age of the individual based on the development of certain skeletal bones, like hand wrist, okay, maturation of the hand and wrist bones, or uh, clavicular bones, or uh, pubic symphysis. Okay. So when you when you are estimating the age based on these skeletal bony elements, that is called as skeletal age. And the lastly, dental age. You are trying to estimate the age based on the dental maturation or dental calcification. So these are the basically four types of age. Okay, that is there. So what is the basic purpose for us? Why do we do the age estimation in the first place? First is construction of a biological profile. So what is bio? This is called as profiling. Okay, see for example, whenever there is uh, some murder has happened, okay, and the body is not able to recognize visually. Okay, see we know that the police are the desperate people here because they have to. They have to proceed with the investigation for them to proceed with the investigation the first thing they need to do is they need to identify the body okay but the body is totally burned beyond visual recognition so how do they proceed with the identification so in this case uh, as a forensic dentist what we do is we do profiling what we do is profiling is nothing but in this in this scenario what we do is we try to estimate the age of the individual we try to estimate the gender we try to determine the gender of the individual as well as in some cases we try to define the ethnicity of the individual okay what's what's the racial background okay so this small information see for example if i say that okay after doing age estimation i'll say that the body belongs to a person the body belongs to a male person male who is falling into the age category of 30 to 40 years so this information will be you know very useful for the police because the, because their search will be narrowed okay before that uh, the search is wide open when I gave the information about the age and the sex of the individual, then the, 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 you know, um, their search will be narrowed down. Okay, so they looked into the missing persons who are falling into that age category, and according to the sex of the individual. So this is something called as profiling. So in, for the for the sake of profiling, what we do is we do the age estimation of the individual. So we have the age groups of medical legal importance. We'll be looking into it later on, and for the purpose of criminal prosecutions. And there are some other purposes like school attendance. Okay, see, 
uh, when when we are joining in the schools, okay, so the first thing they ask is what is the age of the individual, okay. See, basically, we all know that we have birth certificates, but there are some, there are certain children who are from, you know, poor backgrounds, they don't have a proper birth certificates, okay. So, in such cases, and uh, they will be asked upon to bring a, uh, a certificate given by the forensic experts, okay, for the sake of school attendance. And for employment sake, we all know that there are certain government jobs, you know, in certain government jobs, the upper age limit is 35 years, okay. The joining age limit is 25 years, something. So in such cases, you know, whenever, if it is a government job, obviously we know how much competition will be there. You know, in such cases of, com in high competitive cases, obviously it is, it is, it, there are very big chances for, you know, for the people to do frauds, especially the age frauds, okay? So in such cases, if they are not happy with the certificate given by the, you know, student or the applicant, they'll ask the, you know, the certificate of a forensic expert. And for social benefits, okay, this is especially for the adults, okay? Um, when they are about to, you know, reach their retirement to, to, to get some benefits from the government. Okay. They're supposed to be, you know, over 55 years of something like that. Okay. So to, to, you know, to, to utilize the benefits that were given by the government, they have to show that they are so-and-so above so-and-so years of age. So for that sake, also a few elder people comes to us for age estimation and for marriage sake, we know that the age before it was 18 years for, you know, Legal age for the girls to get married is 18 years and for boys it is 21 years. Now there is a lot going on, you know, and there's they are already suggested to change it from 18 to 21 years to girls as well. So for the sake of marriages and for sports authorities, okay. We often get a good number of cases from the sports authorities because we know that in sports they have certain divisions that is under 14, under 16, under 18, under 21, something like that. Okay. So in such cases, in this, this is uh, in these situations also there is a lot. There is very good chances for the fraud to happen. Okay. So for that reason, they ask, uh, they ask for the, you know, a certificates which were given by the forensic experts or the forensic dentists. Okay. So these are the basically uh, main reasons why we do the age estimation. So that is the uh, what the reason for us to do the age estimations. So, so basically, uh, what are the different age estimations? So what parameters will you see? Okay. So Black et al. in 2010 has given defined, okay, we have a four pillars of age estimation. The first is social and psychological age evaluation. Um, see, basically uh, what it says is that um, the an expert who is called a psychologist, he look and interviews the child, okay? He won't be doing any, you know, um, invasive methods, okay? He'll be just interviewing the size, okay? See, what he'll do is he'll assess the mental status, okay? But he doesn't look into the physical maturation, physical, uh, you know, he doesn't do the physical examination of maturation or analyze the maturation. But what he do is, you know, assesses the mental status of the individual. Okay. So it is basically like, you know, one-on-one -on -one interview. So he'll ask some question, the way the child responding to that question. So based on his responses, he'll try to understand the mental maturity of the child. And based on that, they try to estimate the age of the individual. Okay. So basically this is a slow process because Obviously, only when the child is comfortable with the person or the expert, then only, you know, once the trust happened, then only he'll respond. So this is basically a slow process. But at the same time, these days, children are, you know, their maturity is far, behind, far beyond their age, okay, because of the technology they are using now, okay. So, yeah, this is one of the pillar of age estimation method that is social and psychological age evaluation, okay. And the second thing is physical examination. Like I said, height and weight, body, what is the body type, what is the body mass index. So what are the secondary sexual characteristics, whether there are any, they're based, they try to estimate the age of the individual based on these parameters. Like I said before, they are not reliable because obviously there are so many other factors that are influencing this. Okay, that is, so this is the second age estimation method. And the third is skeletal age estimation method, like I said before, using different skeletal elements. And finally, dental age estimation. And like I said, why dental is superior to the skeletal is because dental development is more controlled by genes and less influenced by the nutrition and environmental factors. Okay. So now we know what are the different pillars. Okay. So we are talking about dental age estimation methods here. Okay. When we are talking about dental age estimation methods, we have four types. One is we do clinical or visual examination of the teeth to determine the age of the individual. And we also do the histological examination of the teeth. We also do the radiographic examination of the teeth. And finally, the biochemical 
evaluation of the teeth. Okay, so all these four methods will be used on the tooth to estimate the age of the individual. See, um, if you see here, we can see we have both invasive methods and non-invasive methods. Uh, do you guys have any idea what is invasive and non-invasive? Okay, basically, invasive is nothing but okay. See, you need to destroy the evidence in order to do the analysis. Okay. See, for example, take histological methods. Histological methods where in which you need to take the tooth, you need to prepare the ground section of the teeth. And based on, after doing the ground section, you will be looking into the parameters to estimate the age of the individuals. Okay, so that is histological methods. So in, in so here among the four, histological and biochemical are considered to be the invasive methods, whereas the clinical and the radiographic methods are non-invasive methods. Because, for example, when I say is estimation using clinical examination, what I am doing here is that I will be doing intraoral examination of the child. Okay, so I am not I am not extracting any tooth here. What I am doing is a simple examination. Okay, and based on the erupted teeth that are there in the oral cavity or the teeth that are present in the oral cavity, I'll try to estimate the age. That is clinical or visual. And in the radiographic, what I do is I'll I'll take an OPG. Okay, which is nothing but an orthopantomograph. Okay, so that shows the presence of all the teeth. So here I'm not I'm not doing any harm to the child. Okay, what I'm just doing is I'm not destroying any evidence here. So what I'm doing is just taking a simple radiograph. So this is a non-invasive method. But in histological, you need to extract the teeth. You need to prepare the ground section. And for biochemical means there are certain methods called that is racemization techniques, wherein which certain amino acids will be you know studied. For example, take aspartic acid. Okay, so there the literature says that with increase in age, the racemization of this aspartic acid increases. Okay, so that parameter will be used to estimate the age of the individual in adults. Okay, so these are the different methods. See, it is always suggested. You know, it is always preferable to go with non-invasive methods because we all know that in forensic investigations, uh, evidence plays a very very big role. Okay, and you always choose a method that preserves the evidence but not destroying the evidence okay so i always prefer to go with radiographic methods of age estimation which are going to learn in the next slides so we have different phases okay um first thing um see when when we talked about age estimation using teeth we have different phases okay so age estimation using dentition can be grouped into three phases first is aging in prenatal neonatal and postnatal that is first phase, age estimation in children and adolescents, that is second phase, and age estimation in adults, that is last phase, okay? So that is, uh, these are the three different phases in age estimation. And firstly, if you go to into the first phase, so this can be very accurate, okay? Because, because we have, you know, the tooth formation always follow a sequence of events, okay? It starts with formation of the appearance of the tooth gems, then, then you know, then the cuspal formation will take place, the mineralization of the cusps, the crown formation. See this sequence, whatever it is that happens, the same in every individual. Okay, so that's the reason this whatever uh, techniques we follow in this period of time, they are very accurate. So we all know that usually the primary, we all know that we have two sets of dentition, right? One is primary teeth and the secondary, I mean the permanent teeth. So usually the primary tooth gems usually appears around the age of seven weeks in utero. Okay. While the permanent tooth germs appears around three to three and a half to four months after birth of the individual. So usually for this thing, we use the histological methods. Um, there are something called as neonatal lines. Okay. Neonatal lines usually forms during the time of birth. Okay. So we'll I'll show you the image. And increment, there are certain other lines called as incremental lines of von Ebner and counter lines of Owen. See, um, see if you can see here, usually uh, like I said, the primary tooth germs usually appear seven weeks in utero. Okay. So for them to appear, they have to mineralize. Okay. But before the mineralization, they, the tooth germs usually appears as a radiolucent area. Okay. So this radiolucent area, the appearance of this radiolucent area can be useful to estimate the rough age of the individual. Okay. During this prenatal period. And like I said, we have something called as neonatal lines. Okay. So we have neonatal lines both in the enamel as well as in the dentin okay so basically um, so it is nothing but uh, the neonatal lens forms because of the disturbance that happened during the time of birth okay because the child uh, the childbirth happened and because of that disturbance there is a line formation takes place that is called as uh, neonatal lens so you can see the the, the enamel 
Be below this line is called as prenatal, prenatal enamel, and the, whatever the enamel that formed is called as after the birth is called as postnatal. Enamel. The same is for the um, dentin, I mean dentin as well. So they are called as other lines called as incremental lines of von Ebner and incre incremental lines of Owen. So this, these both lines are seen within uh, the dentin. Okay, so um, they reflect the variations or the disturbances. Okay, basically the disturbances that are happened during the dentin. Uh, during dentin formation okay so uh, literature says that age estimation can be done using these you know during the especially during the period of prenatal natal and postnatal life okay so that is first phase and second phase is children and adolescents okay because we know that tooth maturation takes place up to 20 years of age and and, and at the same time the tooth will erupt into the oral cavities so in children and adolescents we use these two parameters that is tooth eruption and tooth calcification so first thing is tooth eruption because we because it is basically a very convenient method okay see like it for example a child comes to you you make him sit in the dental chair ask him to open the mouth look into the number of teeth okay you have some rough idea okay what teeth of or what teeth erupts at what age so based on the presence of teeth you can assess the age of the individual okay see it is a convenient clinical method visual assessment of teeth and compared with the radiographs and charts so what is the main drawback of this uh you know what was the biggest disadvantage or drawback when you use tooth eruption as a parameter is because, see, for example, if the child is having any infection in the jaw bones, that delays the eruption of the tooth. And if the, if the child is having a crowded teeth or small jaws, that results in the delay of the eruption of the teeth. Or if, you know, if there is any premature loss of the primary tooth happened, it results in the earlier eruption of the teeth. Okay, because all these factors affect the age estimation okay so it is it is not advisable to estimate the age based on tooth eruption it is always important for us to use the tooth calcification or maturation okay even though it is a convenient clinical method it is not recommended because you know because of these factors that influence the emerging patterns of the teeth okay so we have different dental charting systems i see uh, in tooth eruption, what we do is we take an OPG of the individual or we just look into the intraoral cavity and we compare that with the charts, okay? See, this is the first of, uh, it was, it was Shore and Maslow's dental chart, which was given in 1944. Okay, you can see uh, what's, what, what is the teeth that is, you know, uh, present in the oral cavity at what time, what teeth are present in the oral cavity. This chart has given till 35 years of age, okay? So what we do is we compare with the intraoral findings or the teeth that are in the intraoral cavity. Uh, with this chart and we try to estimate the age of the individual okay this is one charting system another charting system is obelacar's uh, dental chart which was given in 1989 okay similar chart it is um, with few variations from the previous one so this is also you know basically we compare here and the the recent one is the london atlas dental chart which was given in 2010 so basically this what we do is we just compare okay compare but personally, I believe it is not recommended to use this eruption or comparative dental charts because, um, like I said, there are so many factors that influences the eruption of the teeth. Okay, so that should be considered before giving. So you always try to estimate the age based on maturation of the teeth. So that is um, estimating age based on tooth eruption in children and adolescents. Now, based on tooth calcification. Okay. So we know that calcification, now calcification or mineralization or maturation is a sequential process, okay? So even though there is an infection in the oral cavity, it doesn't affect the tooth maturation. Even though there is lack of space, it doesn't affect the tooth maturation or tooth mineralization. Even though there is full crowding or uh, premature, uh, you know, shedding of the primary tooth, it doesn't affect the mineralization. Mineralization is, is a process that, that is not altered by any local factors, okay? So that will, even though the tooth is impacted also, the maturation takes place in the underlying bone, okay? So that process is not affected by the local factors. So that is the reason you always use the maturation of the tooth to estimate the age of the individual, okay? Even though when the emergence, see, assess age at periods when no emergence takes place. Like I said, even though the tooth is completely impacted also, the maturation takes place properly and you can use that point to estimate the age of the individual. So we have different methods available, okay? One is NOLAS method. NOLAS is, you know, it was given in the year of 1960. We have the emergence method that used this dental maturation. We have chemerous method. And in my workshop today, I'm going to talk about the method and chemerous method in detail, okay? How you, how you need to estimate the age 
and uh, based on these two methods okay and finally adults okay so like i said before we know that by the age of 20 to 25 years all the teeth will be matured okay so there is no more tooth development all will be erected all will be matured so what parameters we use then to estimate the age of the individual okay so it was first studied by the staffs in the 1947 he has given few parameters okay so basically whatever the parameters whatever the techniques suggested by the gustafson it is an invasive method okay and uh, he has given six parameters okay see there is a simple uh, code for the six parameters of gustafson that is that is called as aps rtc so aps rtc we know what is rtc right road transport corporation aps i mean aps rtc means andhra pradesh state okay that is that is the way i used to remember okay so a stands for attrition okay so we all know that with increase in age the attrition takes place okay so the staffs have said that based on the time, you know attrition the rate of attrition we can estimate the age of the individual and the position p stands for position of epithelial attachment or periodontal attachment so with increase in age the attachment will you know the attachment will be lost it will be moved more apically so based on that we can estimate the age of the individual and uh, it stands for secondary dentin formation okay so with the amount of secondary dentin formation what happens is that there is a narrowing of the pulp cavity takes place so this can be used to estimate the age of the adults and root resorption and transparency that is nothing but dentinal translucency and finally cemental annulation so these are the six parameters which were suggested by gustafson okay and for us to study most of the you see for example attrition means there is no need for you to extract the teeth you can look into the, you can look in visually and you can estimate the age but it is not recommended why because see now these days if the if the person is having a habit of bruxism we know bruxism right so grinding of the teeth okay so if, if the person is having an attrition habit of attrition i mean grinding or bruxism you can see attrition even at the earlier ages okay we have seen cases where the an individual with 25 individual who is 25 years of age has severe attrition so that cannot be used and position of epithelial attachment see for example if the patient is a diabetic okay there are chances for them to lose their epithelial attachment at the younger ages okay so that is this is not recommended and secondary dentin transparency root resorption and secondary cementum to study all these things all these four parameters you need to extract the teeth prepare a ground section and analyze the changes okay so that is gustafs criteria so these are the cemental annulations okay um alternate dark and light bands so if i constitute say incremental line that indicates one year of the age of the individual okay nothing but this is see this is these are the six parameters you can see a stands for attrition with increase in age the attrition increases and secondary dentin formation with increase in age the pulp cavity size decreases okay so that can be used periodontal attachment periodontal attachment p stands for periodontal with increase in age the periodontal attachment is moving more rapidly and you can see the teeth translucency you can see that the bite area is increasing with age because with increase in age there is a blockage of the dentinal tubules haplets okay that doesn't allow the light to transfer so that's the reason the translucency increases with increase in age and cement lamination etc and root resorption okay so these are the parameters that we use in you know to estimate the age in adults okay so basically um, what i try to conclude from this theory i mean see basically i divided my this workshop thing into two parts one is a theory okay just wanted to give some introduction about what is age estimation what are the parameters we do what are the different phases of age estimation and the second is about workshop that is mainly focusing on how you perform age estimation uh, in children and juveniles okay using the most the most popular methods of age estimation okay so what i'm trying uh, so with this um with this i uh, what i'm trying to conclude now is that in terms of legal representation age estimation is one of the important steps for identification in forensic odontology see it's it's whether it is about identifying an unknown body or whether it is trying to determine the age of a child or a juvenile okay so age estimation plays a very important role and we know that age estimation using teeth is always it is superior than the age estimation of the skeletal bones okay and we know that determination of dental age is done by the reference to dental calcification or the regression changes dental calcification is nothing but dental maturation that is useful in children and regressive changes that are useful in adults okay and lastly the importance of age estimation includes see 
like i said the next step we are going to enter is about age estimation we are trying to assess the age thresholds of medical legal importance in children adolescents and sub adults okay so this is uh, basically a brief introduction okay so what is um, what is dental age estimation uh, what what uh, as a forensic odontologist what we are trying to do you know what parameters we look to estimate the age of an individual okay um, i hope you all understood what is basically a dental age estimation uh, what parameters we see and uh, we uh, with this with this i conclude my you know uh, introductory lecture on this dental age estimation and uh, if you all if you all want a break for some time uh, we can take a break for 15 minutes and after that we can start with our uh, you know main uh, main workshop okay so let me know what whatever it is okay yes sir thank you so much and this was really interesting for all of us i hope uh, all the participants have understood all the things that is the basic about the odontology as well so yes sir you can take your break for 15 minutes and then we will uh, meet again and we'll start the session again and and one more thing is that i assume uh, everyone have their own laptops you know with them because i have sent some uh, uh, i would like to ask them Yes, sir. They have. They have that. They have that. Sir. Okay. 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 That's great. Right. So we'll uh, we'll start with our. Uh, so it is not two fifty three. You you tell me at what time we'll start, or if you want me to start right away, we can. I'll start. Uh, we'll take a break after a while. After a while, maybe. Sir, Whatever as, you suggest. As per your preference, sir. It's uh, only upon you. Okay. I will start around three five then. Okay. No problem, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> So meanwhile, everyone, I'm just uh, uh, sending you the some uh, link for following the uh, IASR and uh, the SIFS as well. So you can just take on the link and uh, visit on that. Follow us on uh, different social media so that uh, if there is any kind of further events and uh, uh, the conferences and the seminars are going uh, to happen in our website. So you can uh, get those things in immediately and you can participate on that. So I'm just sending you some links. Just visit on that till now once the sir is rejoining. <coughs> Just give me one minute. The link that I have shared here is uh, our Facebook link, the page of our Facebook uh, uh, page that is for ISR. You can visit on that and all the events, all the updates are the, being updated there on. So you can visit on that as well. Now. So I have shared the link for uh, the our LinkedIn page and as well as the Instagram page. So you can also follow on that uh, uh, pages also. So to get the all the events update because uh, we are having a lot of events and uh, like uh, the conferences, the workshops, the seminars, as well as we are also having the quizzes on the weekly manner. So you can visit on our websites and you can get all the updates so that you can be updated on the, these things. And you can participate on that, get the knowledge, get the awareness about uh, whatever going on the field of forensic science. So yes, you can visit on that. Just give me one moment.
Uh, I request everyone. Uh, am I audible, Nishika? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. So I request everyone to have your laptop with you, and uh, I think everyone has the content uh, or the material that is being provided for the workshop. So everyone keep a note of that and uh, be ready with your laptop. Meanwhile, other four person is back up to the break. Give me your quick response that you all have your laptop and the material that have been provided to you for further session.
Hi everyone. Uh, Samita, can we start? Yes, yes. Welcome back, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay, sir. The session is yours, sir. Welcome back again in this session. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm audible now. Yes, sir. You are clearly audible. Just give me a minute. Sure, now you can see my PPT, right? Right, sir. See, uh, uh, welcome back one and all, okay, once again. So basically, I think uh, I have given some, uh, I've shared some uh, material. Okay, I believe uh, everyone of you have got the material. So, uh, in that material, I have given a link for a software that is called ImageJ software. Okay, so it is it is uh, it is free. Okay, and you just have to download it, and there is no need for you to install it as well because once you click on the executive button, it will automatically open that uh, software. Okay, so I, I assume uh, every one of you have downloaded that software of ImageJ. That with that, I have given some material. Okay, like uh, uh, like if uh, like seven to eight articles I have shared. So because it will be used for your, uh, because I'm going to uh, use those articles in this present workshop. And uh, I believe that can be useful for you guys in the future for your future references as well. And I have shared few OPGs, okay. Uh, dental radiographs, or the pantomographs. So when, in which um, uh, I'll make you guys to do as estimation uh, in four cases, like in a simulated cases, where which you need to look into the maturation. So uh, I believe every one of you have got, uh, have received this uh, material, I'm assuming. If, if any of you guys have not received this, just let us know so that they'll forward it to your mail once again. Okay. And, um, and one thing I wanted to say is that I wanted to make this as interactive as possible because see, we know that obviously workshops are all very important. I mean, uh, interesting, especially when you talk about forensics. Okay, forensics is always interesting thing. But personally, I always believe to always, I always, uh, you know, wanted to do or conduct workshops in person. Okay. Because that way uh, it gives me a chance to interact with each and everyone. Okay. Because uh, that's a different feel. Okay. And at the same time, because connecting a workshop virtual, you know, or online is, is kind of different. Okay. Because we don't know how the other person is receiving, whether they have any, any, you know, whether they are they able to, you know, uh, follow what I'm saying. But, but I just want to let you guys know that just feel free to stop me anywhere in between because I just wanted to interact with you guys. And please let me know if I go, if I'm going real fast. Okay. So that I, don't, I just don't want that, you know, um, I want you guys to understand what I'm saying. Okay. Because I try to make this as, as simple as possible, as easy as possible, because, um, because it's ultimately it's, it's it's important for us to understand okay uh, the basic uh, the common methods we use for age estimation and uh, uh, especially in children and uh, juveniles okay so yeah so but just just feel free um, I, just you can switch on your mics and uh, get uh, talk to me because don't type okay if you have any doubt don't type because I'm not sure because I'm on full screen I'm not able to look into the chat box and if the organizers can do that for me. If any of if any of you guys have any doubts, just type it out. They'll they'll uh, get back to me. Yes, sir. Also, uh, I have given everyone to permission for the unmuting and uh, uh, speaking uh, whatever they have to speak. And okay. if there is anything in the chat box, I'll be there for you. Sure, sure. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, like I said, welcome back once again. Okay. So basically, uh, like I said, why I'm why I'm, see. I'm a forensic odontologist by profession, but when into when 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 I look into my practice as a forensic odontologist, um, I've done a lot number of cases on age estimation because I said the scenario, Indian scenario, why we do a lot number of cases on age estimation, and uh, why don't we get a good? Why don't we do a successful dental identification cases? Because it's all about uh, how good how how we are actually uh, retain the records because okay. But dental age estimation is a different thing, okay, as, as a forensic dentist. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, at the same time, it is important for us to have the data that is that should be readily available with you, okay. So, 
what sort of data is needed for you to do the age estimation on your, on your own uh, i'll be teaching you guys so so yeah let's go into this uh, workshop thing so see basically um, see uh, often we get police cases okay so whenever they come whenever the police brought a child uh, to me for this for the purpose of age estimation they ask for two things okay the first thing is what is their basic common inquiry so when when a child was brought by a forensic expert for age estimation they ask for two things okay first what is the age of the child okay this is the basic question see what is the age of the child means uh, they wanted to know uh, what is the age okay so to answer this question basically what we do is we'll use an age estimation method we try to look into the maturity of the tooth uh, you know or the tooth or teeth that are available at the time so based on that uh, we will try to give the range age range okay so that answer the first question that is what is the age of the child and the second question they ask is what is the probability of the child to be above or below the age threshold of medical legal importance okay see because see now you guys wanted to know what is this age threshold of medical legal importance okay because i have been using this you know so often in my lecture okay see basically um, we have certain age groups of medical legal importance okay see for example if you take indian scenario we have different age groups so one is uh, plus or minus 18 years of age okay so we all know the, what is what is what is the importance of this because we all know that the importance so it is not it is it is called as age of majority okay because uh, for example if we say that uh, the child is below 18 years of age we'll call him a minor and if the child is proven to be equal to or above 18 years of age he'll be called as a major because um, there are so much of variations when it comes to law uh, you know when it is applicable to a minor or a major so whenever a juvenile or an adolescent uh, involved in any sort of crimes okay so it is very important for the authorities you know to determine whether the child, whether the individual or the subject is a major or a minor okay so this is very important aspect that should be answered okay in your a certificate because uh, see for example uh, when it comes to answering the first question for example let's imagine i got a child for age estimation i police bought a child to me for an age estimation okay so i did uh, i used the demerits method i did the age estimation and the age i got is 17 17 17 years okay let's say 17 years i got see for any age estimation method it has some error rate okay let's say let's say let's imagine that the method that applied here in this case is an age estimation method that is demerits method and the error rate of this method is 1.5 years okay so what happens in this case is that the age of the child is 17 plus or minus 1.5 years okay that that gives us okay uh, 15.5 to 18.5 years of age so we are giving a range we are getting a range here okay because always when you are giving a age certificate so you always give the age in the form of a range never give in a pinpoint age okay so because this range comes based on the method you are using based on the error rate of the method you are using so when you are getting a range like saying that 15.5 to 18.5 years of age uh, we you actually putting the police or the judge in a dilemma because the lower range is saying that the individual is a minor and the upper range is saying that the individual is a major okay because it's saying 15.5 to 18.5 years okay so it, it, it we actually are putting them in lot of confusion okay so to avoid that confusion it is always important for us to answer the second question that is what is the probability of the child to be a major or a minor or above or below age threshold of medical legal importance okay so to answer this question see this clarify even though you have given the first answer as 15.5 to 18.5 years you always can back, uh, clear that doubt by using the second question okay that is uh, you know by giving a probability okay so how we are going to do that we are going to learn in the next steps okay so the first important age threshold of medical legal importance in indian in indian indian scenario is that age of majority that is plus or minus 18 years of age everyone knows the importance of 18 years okay and the second age group is plus or minus 14 years of age see we all know that 14 years has got medical legal importance nothing but it is the age of child labor in india okay see according to this juvenile justice act okay so no child is who is below 14 years of age or supposed to work 
in any sort of activities okay they're not supposed to work okay uh, especially in any factories or uh, or even in household activities okay so if the child is proven to be above 14 years of age then the child is allowed to work in some activities okay some 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 scenarios okay so that is the importance of 14 years 14 years represents the age of child labor in indian scenario okay so that is another age group of medical legal importance and the third is 16 years so any one of you guys have any idea what is this 16 years represents so basically 16 years is it is called as age of criminal responsibility okay see uh, what is age of criminal responsibility let's say see for example a crime has happened okay a sex uh, you know a juvenile as in as involved in the crime uh, you know where in which that juvenile has raped a girl and murdered that girl okay let's imagine that is the scenario okay that case was brought upon to the you know for age estimation okay so i did the age estimation and i came to know that the age of the child is 17 years okay so what the judge decides in this scenario is that see my age report has given that the age of the child is between 17 and 18 years of age so here it clearly says that the child is a minor okay but what the judge consider in this scenario is that the age of criminal responsibility so age of criminal responsibility is that in this particular case the judge believes that so the age certificate is 17 to 18 years so it was proven that the child is above 16 years of age so the judge thinks that the child is mature enough to know the outcome what he is doing okay so he is mature enough okay so he knows that he is raping that girl he is sexually abusing that girl and he is inflicting harm to that girl because he is 16 16 years and above he knows the outcome of what he is doing okay so that he is mature enough even though he is below 18 years and because he is above 16 years he will consider that child as a major only okay because because of the gruesome act he has done and for example if the child if the child if the same child was proven to be below 16 years of age what the judge decides is that the child is not mature enough in what i know among i mean uh, the child is not mature about not mature about what he is doing he doesn't know if i do this the harm will happen to the child or the or the girl okay so so basically this 16 years indicates the maturity of the individual so what is age of criminal responsibility is nothing but it indicates the you know the maturity of the individual that the judge decides that if the child is above 16 years he is mature enough and if the child is below 16 he is not mature enough okay so before before we all know that the nirbhaya case which happened in 2012 now before that we have both the age of majority and the age of criminal responsibility were set at 18 years in india okay but after that there is lot of pressure on the government okay to change that criminal responsibility from 18 to 16 years why because because as i said in the beginning of my lecture according to this uh, national crime bureau reports most of the crimes were done by the children who are falling into the age groups of 16 to 18 years okay so that's the reason to to you know to avoid these conditions and to decrease the crime rate especially by the juveniles and the adolescents they have changed that criminal responsibility from 18 to 16 years okay so based on the gruesomeness based on the severity of the incident the judge decides whether the child is mature enough or not even though the child proven to be a minor and if he has done a gruesome act he'll consider that child as a major only if he is above 16 years okay so that's the importance of 16 years of age okay so that is one age group that got medical legal importance which is age of criminal responsibility lastly 21 years of age so we all know that uh, age of marriage you know for a uh, legal age for the boys to get married is 21 years and the legal age for the girls to get married is 18 years and uh, now there is some changes happening in indian uh, indian constitution where which um the change the legal age for the girl to get changed to 21 years of age so we might see we might see that in in the future as well so usually we know that child labor child marriages are most common thing in india okay so because of that thing that was happening for the past few months that's the reason i have included that in this presentation okay so these are all the different age groups of medical legal importance okay so we need to determine uh, see i i often get the cases of determining age of majority determining the age of child labor i have got very few cases of age of criminal responsibility okay and i have also got cases related to 
uh, you know 21 years where in which that is not because of marriage for the sake of marriage that people have come to me for the sake of certain government you know schemes especially for the girls to get married so they need to show the certificate proving that they are above 21 years of age so these are the few things okay so these are all the few age groups that got medical legal importance okay so like i said uh, no, no matter whatever the case you are getting you should be in a position to answer these two questions so what is the age of the child to answer this question we will get an we will give a age range okay and what is the probability of the child to be a major or a minor or above or below 14 or 16 years what we do is we will we'll determine that in the in the terms of percentage okay like i am 90% sure that the individual is a minor i am 95% sure that the girl is a major so you can't pick these random numbers like 95% sure 98% you can't you can't say it on your own okay you need to have proper research data findings okay with you so with with ha having this proper research data based on that only you will be in a position you should be you should give your report okay so in this presentation i am going to use my research findings okay whatever i have done the research i have done so far in this uh, little experience of mine so how i use those findings to estimate or to predict the age groups of medical legal importance okay that we are going to learn in the coming slides so first 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 age group we are focusing on the prediction of the attainment of age of majority that is 18 years okay so what are the dental parameters that we use to predict 18 years of age so we know that so what what see we know that we have 32 tooth available okay so we have incisors we have canines premolars and molars so but what teeth are we are we going to use so okay to predict this especially the 18 years of age okay so we all know that we have third molars, third molars alone, okay, because so when we talk about third molars, we are basically looking into to answer the question of 18 years, we look into the maturation of third molars is one parameter and second thing is eruption of third molars, okay. So these are, I'm, I'm not suggesting to use the eruption, but I'm saying these two are available, okay. The first thing what, what we are going to discuss is the maturation of third molars. So we know that they are the only teeth available. We know that by the age, by the age of 14 years, all the teeth except the third molars were fully formed, okay? So after the 14 years of age, 14, 15 years of age, third molars are the only teeth that are available. And we know that their development extends into the early 20s, okay? Uh, that is, they're having an age range of 18 to 21 years because in some individuals, we see that the third molars were fully formed by the age of 18 years. And in few people, we see that their maturation extends even till 25 to 30 years of age. There are such cases as well. Okay. So because of this, you know, of the extension of, you know, the maturation of the third molars into the early 20s, they are the most reliable tooth for us to predict this age group, especially the age group of, I mean, age of majority. Okay. So we basically use two methods the most common methods the most popular methods first is the demetrius method of age estimation okay probably everyone heard about this one okay and also the chemerius method of age estimation see um uh, if you if you look both of them uh, one is called as a subjective method and the second one is called as an objective method or a metric method okay so what is subjective and what is objective we'll see in the next slides okay so the first thing is demergence method. So we all know a, a little introduction about demergence. Okay. So it was introduced first introduced in the year of 1973. Okay, which is based on the maturation. See, uh, initially in the when it, when it was introduced in the beginning. Okay, in the first time. So they have looked into the maturation of only up to seven teeth. That is from incisors to second molars. Okay, and they have looked into the maturation of lower left teeth. Okay. So people often ask, okay, why Demergen has used only the lower teeth? Why not the upper teeth? And why Demergen has mentioned it as left teeth, but not the right quadrant teeth? So this is a basic, simple, uh, see, why Demergen has used the lower teeth is because, see, tooth estimation is, uh, tooth, I mean, uh, tooth development is something uh, that starts with cuspal initiation and finishes with the fully formation, okay? And we, uh, when you are looking into the maturation of the upper teeth, we have we have something called as maxillary sinus that overlap happens and because of that overlapping you are you you cannot appreciate the root formation properly okay that's the reason he suggested to look into the maturation of lower teeth 
and also why the lower left teeth why not the lower right teeth okay this is something okay see basically the data has suggested that see obviously whenever we do some research we always look into the maturation of both right and left teeth and the literature has suggested that there is no statistically significant difference between the maturation of right and left teeth so you can use so he normally says that you can proceed with the lower left teeth okay so it is it is absolutely fine for you to use the right teeth as well okay so what we basically do is when we are analyzing the maturation of left teeth and if we if for example let's say 3 6 is missing that is lower left first molar what we do is we look into the maturation of lower right first molar okay so that's the scenario so you always happy to you can, you are allowed to use the right teeth also okay so this method was actually similar to tanner whitehouse and healy okay see basically they have given different stages based on the uh, maturation of the hand wrist bones okay so that method was used by the demergens where in which the dental development is you know uh, which was then categorized into different sequential events okay so in the in the year of 1973 demergen goldstein and tanner has divided the tooth development into eight stages Yes. Okay. Initially, they named the stages as stage A to stage H. Okay, and in and each stage has recognizable tooth stages. Okay, and um, it is it 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 indicates the initiation of the cuspal formation till the final maturation. So, what's special about this is that they are they can be easily recognizable. Okay, let's see into this image. So, this is the initial classification given by Demirjian. Okay, see, I'm not I'm not showing the image of the images of you know. you i mean uh, incisors canines and premolars because we are actually talking about uh, um age of majority no so the only two that we are looking here is the third molar development so that's the reason i'm mainly focusing on the third molar maturation okay see these are the stages given by demirgen that is from a to h stages a to d indicates the crown formation and stages e to h indicates the root initiation to root completion okay in stage a you can see cusp tips are there okay that are mineralized b indicates mineralized cusps they are united and you have well defined coronal morphology stage c you have you know then there is an evidence of dental deposition takes taking place and stage d the crown has completed okay these are all the crown stages okay and the e stage includes indicates there is you know uh, evidence of bifurcation the root initiate that indicates the root initiation root is initiated but it is less than the length of the crown and stage f is that it is the root has formed which is equal to the length of the crown and g is that the root walls are parallel but the apices are open and finally h indicates the completion of the root formation okay see uh, how you going to estimate the see this was initially given by demirgen in the year of 1973 so how you going to estimate the age in this classification is that With with this diagrammatic representation, he also has given certain scores. Okay, see for example, uh, what you need to do here is you are imagine you have given an OPG. What you do is you need to look into the maturation of three one to three seven. That is central incisor to second molar. So based on the staging of each tooth, you have to give a stage. Okay, for based on the development, you have to give a stage to each tooth. Once you have the stages, you have to replace the scores. you have to give the scores for each stage okay for example let's say in that opg the incisor is in stage h so you need to give a score of 11 point let's imagine that the opg is belongs to a boy okay so and then first central incisor is in the stage h so you will give 11.8 score and let's imagine that second incisor is in also in stage h you give 13.7 so individually you have to give the scores for all the seven teeth so once you have all the seven teeth what you do is you need to sum up all the scores okay so once you sum up you will get a total score that is called as total maturity score so once you have that score what you do is you will compare the scores in this growth growth percentile charts okay so you have something called as these lines okay slopes that are there which indicates the percentiles that is 3 percentile 10 percentile 90 percentile 97 so what we usually do is we use 95 percentile let's imagine we use 97 See, let's say um, the total maturity score what I got from the OPG is ninety. So let's see here. So just follow the ninety-seven percentile slope. So the 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 y-axis indicates the maturity score and the x-axis indicates the age of the individual. So let's say I say the total maturity score is ninety somewhere here. Okay. 
Uh, I hope all you, all of you guys, see my cursor. Okay, I'm moving the cursor. So uh, here is the 90, and it is it is coinciding with the slope. So let's imagine. Then we have to say that the individual is around 9.1 years of age, based on the maturity score. That is how we give the age of the individual, based on the method that was given by Demirjan in the year of 1973. Okay, see. What's the trickiest part here is that it is always important for you to give the staging correctly. Okay, so if by any chance if you give an incorrect incorrect staging, so you will you will be getting an error of more than plus or minus one year or one point five year to two years. Okay, so always it is important for us to give the stages properly when you when you are using the Demirjian method. For example, if you have given a stage G instead of stage F for any molar, so that will bring a difference of one to two years in your final age estimation. Okay, so this is called as see in the in the in the previous slide I said that Demirjian's method is a subjective method. See why I said that because it obviously depends on the experience of the subject. Okay, for example, see if if I am doing the age estimation using Demirjian's method, I'm having a slight ex more experience. Like you know, I'm doing this for more than five to six years of age estimation methods. Okay. So I have set an idea how to, how to identify the developmental stage. But let's imagine if someone who is new to age estimation and they are doing, they are, they are having less experience. Okay. So there are chances for them to do wrong staging. Okay. So that's that, that element of subjectivity is there in images method. Okay. So it is always important. So there are chances for us to have more inter-observer variations, okay? So inter-examiner inter variations, that is called as. So whenever there is some subjectivities include, there are chances for the inter-observer errors to happen, okay? So that is there with Demirjian's method. So it always based on the experience of the examiner who is doing the evaluation, okay? So this is this is um, age estimation, um, you know, given by Demirjian in the year of 1973. But after that, in the year of 2004, that there was a modified images method, which was given in the year of 2004. So if you look in the initial classification, they have not included third molars, but in the new classification, they have included the maturation of third molar. And uh, in the initial classification, they have given only eight stages. They are alphabetical stages. That is from stage A to stage H. But in the new classification, they have given numerical stages. And here they have included two more extra stages. Okay. So that is from stage zero to stage nine. So here stage zero and stage one are the newly added stages. I'll show you the image next slide. Okay. So, and they have replaced the percentile maturity curves, the image that I have shown at the graphical image. So they have replaced that maturity curves with regression formulas. Okay. So there is no need for you to follow the graph, follow the y-axis, follow the x-axis to predict the age of the individual, okay? To estimate the age of the individual. So in the new classification, what they did was, they have done few changes. The first change is they have included the third molars. The second is they have, uh, sorry, they have, um, uh, they have added, added two more stages, that is stage zero and stage one. So they have made it up to 10 stages now, and they have replaced the percentile curves with regression formulas, okay? So this is the image of the, new new classification there in which you can see uh, stage zero there is no evidence of any you know tooth formation okay if you come across such situation you have to give zero okay and if there is some evidence of crypt formation you can see there is a radiolucent area which is oval in shape or spherical in shape so okay so if you come across that appearance that is a crypt formation you have to give stage one and the remaining all stages are common with the initial classification, that is cuspal initiation, uh, you know, fusion of all the cusps, giving a crown morphology or outline. So remaining all stages are common. So in the new classification, they have added two extra stages, that is stage zero and stage one, okay? So this is the new classification. And what we do here is that once you give, see for, like I said, for all the eight teeth, what we do is, uh, first thing is that you have to determine the demergent stage. Once you determine the demergent stage for all the eight teeth, what you do is you have to give the scores. See, and in 2004, they have given new tables. So these are the tables that give the scores. 
so for example let's say if the if the first or the central incisor for males is in stage 9 you have to give a score of 10.68 and second central incisor or lateral incisor in stage 8 you have to give a score of 6.97 and these scores varies between males and females okay so this is a score for males this is a score for females um so once you have these stages determined and once you once you you know once you have once you have given the scores to according to the stages see now you understood what we need to do in the emergence method okay first thing is you need to look into the development stages of all the lower left teeth that is from central incisor to third molar once you have given the emergence stages the next thing what you have to do is you have to give the scores according to the stages and based on the gender of the individual okay so once you have the scores i'll let you know what to do okay so we like i said in the first slide we need to answer two questions so first thing is to answer the first question that is what is the probable age of the child what is the age of the child okay so in 2004 demirjan actually has given formula okay which is they actually has given separate formula for both males and females okay and when that formula was tested in indian population it was found that it actually is giving underestimation okay it is giving it is estimating the age you know uh, it is actually underestimating the age okay it's not it's not uh, it's not properly estimating or overestimating it is underestimating the age so so to to avoid wrong age estimations it is always because obviously it will give the you know uh, errors because see that formula by demirjan was given based on french children okay and what will happen if you use the formula that formula of french children on indian children because obviously we know that the mature, there will be a maturation differences okay the developmental differences will be there okay their growth will be their, their growth is faster than compared to our growth okay okay so that might be the reason so always it is important for you to do your own research and it is always important for us to have our own formula when it comes to age estimation because it is because because obviously the population differences exist okay you just can't blindly use the formula that belongs to french people or belongs to american people okay so you have to come up with your own formula so what in 2010 10 11 ashish acharya from karnataka he has given an individual formula for both sexes based on this emerging stages of two development so basically we use this formula okay so i have given eight articles no in that so this formula are actually in the article number 1 that article belongs to ashish acharya so you can refer to that article later on so he has given two formulas okay so separate formula for males and separate formula for females so if you can see here in the formula there is something called as s so this s indicates the total maturity score like i said uh once you de determine the stages for all the eight teeth you need to give the scores once you have the scores for all the eight teeth you need to sum up all the scores okay by summing up what you get is a score that is called as total maturity score so that value should be substituted into this formula okay if you substitute that value into this formula you will get the age of the individual okay that's that is how we that is how we estimate the age of the individual based on the demergence or ashita charya's formula but the <coughs> the error out of the formula was found to be around plus or minus 1.43 years of age okay so what this error rate you will be understanding in the next slides and to answer the second question so here using the demergence formula or demergence method now we are in a position to answer the first question okay so what is the probable age of the child <coughs> so So you will be giving so by doing uh, staging by doing by giving the scores by substituting the total maturity score into the formula. Now you are in a position to answer the first question. So you will get a range. So for example, by substituting in the formula, you are getting an age of fourteen years. And what you do is you you add this error rate that is fourteen plus or minus one point four three years. So that is your answer for the first question. Okay. and coming to second question to answer the second question that is what is the probability of the child to be a major or a minor see here we are talking about demergent stages okay so we need to know what stage of demergent is useful for us to indicate the age of majority okay so it was first in the year of 1990 minser et al has actually studied <coughs> stages f to h so we know that <clears throat> the median stages a to d 
<coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So we know that um, demiurgian stages A to D talks about crown maturation or crown completion. And demiurgian stages E to H talks about root initiation till root completion. Okay. So in for the first time in the year of 1990, Minster et al. actually studied the stages of F, G, and H to predict 18 years of age. So what he did was he had taken a group of sample of children that belongs to age groups of uh, 12 to 22 years. He looked into the demergent stages of the third molars. Okay. So he studied that when the third molar in the stage, when the third molar is in the stage F of root development, what is the probability of the subject to be a major or a minor? And he has studied the stage of stage G and he studied what is the probability of the subject to be a major or a minor. And finally, stage H, like that he studied. After that, so many researchers from so many countries have studied the same stages and they have given their own findings. And similarly, I also did the study, I mean, I also conducted research for South Indian population, okay? In that, in that research, I verified the usefulness of demergent stages of root development. Similarly, I also studied stages F, G, and H. And when I use these stages individually or independently, what is the probability of the subject to be a major or a minor? Okay, so I studied that. So this article is article number two that I have given to you guys. So you can use it for your reference. So you'll understand it once you go through it, okay? So in that article, if you look into the subtract in the abstract of the article here you can see that i have given that the estimated post test probability for males and females using stage h was 0 0.82 and 0 0.91 that is see let's say that i got an opg of a male okay and i found that the third molar is in stage h so if i'm using this research so i'll say that the probability of the child to be a major is 82%. So that's what this line is indicating. And if that OPC belongs to a female, and if the third molar is in stage H, what I'll say in my report is that the probability of the female subject is 91%. The probability of the female subject to be a major is 91%. Okay, that's what it indicates. Okay. So, and I also have seen you know, these are this, this table indicates the findings, okay, where in which the P stands for the probability. So, see, for example, let's look into the stage F, okay. Let's imagine the male subject is in stage F, okay. So, the probability of the subject to be a major is above 18 years is 66%. And for the same for uh, the same for the girl is 72%. And if the, if the subject that the male subject and the third molar is in stage G, the probability is 75%. And for female, it is 79%. And for stage H, 82% for males and 91% for females. See, um, with the increase in stage, the probability of the child to be a major is increasing. Okay. So this is the findings that I have. See, for me to answer the question of age of majority. Okay. So I need to have some data. Okay, because often I, the most commonly, you know, I work in Hyderabad, which is southern part of India. Okay, so in order to give me the report, okay, to indicating the probability of the child to be a major or a minor, I need to have my own research data. Okay, because I'm not, I'm not, uh, even, I don't, I, I don't suggest, <clears throat> I personally don't suggest myself to use the formula of North Indian people also, because some research has suggested that there is a developmental differences between the North North Indian people as well as the South Indian people when it comes to the maturation of the teeth. There is, uh, so keeping that in mind, I always prefer to carry my own research and I use my findings to estimate the age of the individual or to predict the age of majority. So what I do is that whenever I get a case of age estimation uh, to identify the age of majority or to estimate the age, I use this three, I use Ashitacharya formula to estimate the age and I use this article to predict the probability of age of majority. Hope you guys understand this, okay? So I'll, um, so now you know, now you understood, okay? When you use the images method, how to answer the first question and how to answer the second question, okay? So you can use this second, uh, to answer the second question, you can use this uh, article as a reference, okay? 
So based on this article, when this when the individual is in stage H, I am sure that I am eighty two percent sure that the subject is above eighteen years of age. Okay. So when you what are the steps that we are supposed to follow when you are doing dental age calculation using the emergence method? First thing is that like I said, the emergence development stages should be assigned to all the teeth in the lower left quadrant. And for example, if any teeth in the lower left quadrant are missing, you can actually use the right quadrant teeth. That is lower right quadrant. That is fourth quadrant. Okay. And after that, once you assign the stages to all the teeth, what you need to do is you need to score, give the scores. Okay. You need to give the scores for each tooth. Like that, you have to give the scores for all the eight teeth. And then once you have the scores, individual scores for all the eight teeth, you need to sum them up, and you will be getting the total maturity score. Okay. So, which is called as AS, okay, and this value of S should be substituted into the formula to get the dental age. See, guys, um, I've given a PDF, okay, that says age estimation using Demirjian teeth, Demirjian method. So, if you look into that PDF, you'll uh, you'll you can see the Demirjian stages development as well as the scores tables, okay. So, you can use that, and also I have given an Excel sheet that says calculations, okay. So, because in that Excel sheet, I also I already uh, inserted the formulas. So, what you need to do is you just need to uh, put the scores into the given slots. It will automatically calculate the calculate the age of the individual. Okay. See, for example, let I'll show here. Okay. See, in the if you open that Excel sheet that says calculations, so we have three different pages. Okay. First is males. If you look into the bottom of the Excel sheet, just open the sheet once. Okay. If you look into the bottom of the sheet, the first page says males and females, and the third page says TMM. That is for chemicals. Okay. See if you see here. See this is what you have to do. For for all the lower left teeth, you need to give the stages first. See we have stages from zero to nine. So what you need to do is you need to look into the development stage of each tooth, and you should give the staging for all the eight teeth. Once you give the stages, you need to give the scores accordingly. If it is a male subject, you need to give male scores. If it is a female subject, you need to give the female scores. Okay. So once you have all the scores entered here, it will automatically do the calculation. Okay, sir, so because already the formulas are inserted inserted into the Excel sheet. So here is the ninety eight point three four is the total maturity score. That is S. Okay. So once you have that total maturity score, this will automatically gives the age. So see. Uh, when i click on this dental age that is here you can see the age the formula already inserted here okay so d11 indicates so the d column and 11th row so 98.34 so i am substitute this is the s value in the formula so i am substituting the s value into the formula it is giving the automatically the age of the individual and i said that ashita chara formula has an error rate of plus or minus 1.43 years so we have two other columns that is the minimum age so 18.26 plus or minus 1.43 years so that gives the age as 16.83 as the minimum and 19.69 as the maximum okay so you can see guys in this particular individual to answer the first question what i am giving age range is what the age range i am giving here is 16.83 to 19.69 years okay that is the age range that i'll give and if you look here the third molar is in stage 7 okay stage 7 is nothing but um stage f okay stage f so the probability of the subject to a mind to be a minor okay according to my research findings in this article when the subject is in stage f okay that nothing means the the subject is below stage h so it increases the probability that the subject to be a minor is more okay so in this particular example the age to answer the first question the age range is 16.83 to 19.69 and since i found that the third molar is in stage 7 which is equal to stage f of the previous classification i am 90% sure that the subject is below 18 years of age that is the subject is a minor okay that is how we do the Age estimation using Demirjian's method. Okay, hope you all understand. If you have any doubt, just let just shout out. Okay.
So I can see that uh, someone asked me, please say how tables and sports are obtained for boys and girls. So basically, sir, that is that was given by the demirjian, okay, and uh, uh, it depends on the maturity. They have looked into the maturation of more than uh, a sample of three thousand to four thousand children, okay. So they have, um, to be frank, even we don't know how they have given the maturity scores, okay, and uh, individually how they have given, but they have given it and we have used that and ashita chair also has also has derived this formula based on this maturity scores only okay um, so this is how we estimate the age based on demir chess method i i assume that uh, if you have any doubts just let me just ask me okay so because now i am moving to the next method that is chemerius method of age estimation okay Shall I move to the next uh, next method of age estimation? Okay, I assume that's an S. Um, see, we will be doing an example later on. Okay, so that I mean that time you will get some idea. Okay, what you what is how do we do you know uh, how to do a, a demersion and how to do chemerier. And second method of age estimation is chemerier's method of age estimation. See, uh, like I said in the first uh, slide, demersion's method is a subject to method. And the second is chemerius method is an objective method or a metric method okay metric we also know, we all know what is metric metric is nothing but measurements okay so it was introduced by chemerius at all in the year of 2006 it was done on a sample of 455 children who are belonging to the age group of 5 to 15 years and uh, basically what chemerius did in this measurement in this method is that he assessed the relationship between the age and the measurement of the open FISs. See, we all know that tooth maturation is a sequential event, okay? It takes place to, you know, uh, the steps involved, okay? So what he did was he, he carried out certain measurements, okay? To estimate the age of the individual. And he looked into the relationship between these measurements and the age of the individual, okay? So what are the measurements that are involved is that A stands for uh, uh, the distance between the open FISs and the L stands for the tooth length, okay? Let's uh, just have a look into this image. See, if you see here, these are the measurements that Chemerer has carried out, okay? See, if you can see the, I'm pointing at the canine here. So if you can see this horizontal measurements, this is measuring the width of the open effects of the canine, okay? And this vertical line indicates the length of the developing canine, okay? So that is how for each tooth, he has performed two measurements. That is the width measurement, and length measurements. The same is for premolar here, second premolar here. And if you look into the first molar, he has, you can see it, we, obviously there are two teeth, okay? So what you need to do is you need to measure the width for two roots separately, okay? So this is the apical width of medial root, and this is the apical width of distal root, and this is the length of the tooth. And you can see here the third molar is still in the crown phase. So we have only two measurements. And if the third molar, I mean, if you have molars, that root initiation has happened already, you have to do apical width measurement separately for medial root as well as distal root, okay? So in Chemerius method, he has, he also performed initially in the method which was given in the year of 2006, okay? Chemerius also has looked into the maturation of the lower left 17th, okay? He did not look into the maturation of the third molars, okay? So he looked into the maturation of all the 17th and he has given a formula, okay? In 2007, to answer the first question, like I'm talking, I'm referring to the first slide, to answer the first question, so we will be using the Chemerius formula, where in which the evaluation of the seven left mandible teeth was performed. Using this method, age can be estimated up to 15 years only, because, like I said, Chemerius has evaluated only up to second molars. He didn't include the third molars. And when we all know that, Second molars will be finished by the age of 14, 15 years. So using this formula given by Chemerier, you cannot estimate the age beyond 15 years, okay? So I've given the third article, uh, which was referring this to this Chemerier's method. Okay, just have a look into that. And this is the formula, okay? See, uh, he hasn't given a separate formula for males and females, okay? So he has given the formula here, okay? Once you evaluate all the seven teeth, measure the all the seven teeth, once you have those values, you have to substitute that values into this. See, basically, see, one of the advantage of the Chemerian method is that it is a metric method, okay? 
metric method means uh, there is no need for the subject to have an experience like i said for the emergence method experience is plays a role because an experienced person can assign the stages you know accurately but here when i'm saying this is a metric method or measurements see no matter how many times you do no matter uh, whether the person is an experience or not experienced we'll do the same measurements because we know the start point and we know the end point and all you need to do is you need to measure between the points okay so you have set an idea about the landmarks okay so that is the advantage of kemiras technique kemiras technique all you need to do is you need to measure the between two points and once you click the or the software automatically do the calculation it will give the output okay so you need to use those values and you need to uh, i mean uh, replace that values in the formula and the estimation will be done so basically the inter observer errors are basically less in kemiras method because it is a metric method and it, and the experience is not that needed for kemiras technique okay main disadvantage is cannot be used above 15 years so what should be done here okay because we are talking about age of majority and i am saying this formula given by kemirer cannot be used beyond 15 years okay be keeping that in mind in 2019 i did a study okay then which i looked into the maturation of third molars alone okay so i, I took a sample from 7 to 22 years and in each opg i looked into the maturation of third molars and i i looked into the relationship between the third molar maturity and the age based on the relation i have given two different formulas okay so that that third molar maturity is called as tmm that is third molar maturity index so it is nothing but like i showed before you need to calculate the mesial root width you need to calculate the distal root width and you need to uh, divide that with the length of the individual length of the tooth what you get is the tmm value so and uh, once you re once you replace this tmm value in the formula that i have given uh, you will be getting the age of the subject and the formula that i have given had had an error rate of plus or minus 1.54 years okay uh, look here okay so so this is the formula i have given separately for males and females and once you have the apical width of mesial root and the apical width of distal root these should be added together and they should be divided by the length of the teeth what you will get is the tmm or i3m tmm or i3m nothing but third molar maturity index once you substitute that value into this formula you will get the age of the individual okay so age of the individual what we do is uh, for example let's say i've got 16 years so when i when i use this method and i got the age of 16 years i'll give the report as 16 plus or minus 1.54 years and for the ashitacharya formula it is plus or minus 1.4 years okay and uh, so this answer the first question okay see what whatever the formula given by the kemirer cannot be used by us because first thing is it was derived based on the italian sample okay that cannot be applied here even though if you try to apply also that formula cannot be applied beyond 15 years of age and we are in the situation here to answer age of majority question okay so we are trying to answer the age of an individual who is falling into the category of 15 to 20 years so in such cases uh, what we need to use is this the formula which was given by me where in which i have looked into the maturation of the third molars alone and this is the formula that should be substituted okay so that answers the first question using kemirer's method okay the second question is what is the probability okay so in 2008 the same kemirer okay so initially kemirer has given age estimation formula in 2006 and in 2008 he has given a cut off value okay so cut off value which is based on third molar maturity okay so he said that this cut off value can be used to predict or to estimate the age of the individual okay so that cut off value is 0.08 okay what this cut off value says is that according to this when the tmm value is less than or equal to 0.08 the probability of the subject to be a major is very high okay and when the tmm value is greater than 0.08 the probability of the subject to be a minor is very high okay so based on this we can determine the age of majority and this formula this value was tested in 
all the you know see um, all the populations and they have said that this value of cutoff value of 0.08 is found to be very useful okay similarly i also tested the value in our population that is south indian population which was given in article number 6 and i came to know that when i use this cutoff value of 0.08 and if i found that the value is less than 0.08 in female then i can surely say that i am 98% sure that the female subject is a major and if the value is, is less than 0.08 in male subject i can surely say that i am 95% sure that the subject is a major that the male subject is a major so if you look here if you compare the probability values between demergen and hemerias your your confidence levels have increased okay see the con the probability with demergen method is only 82% and 91% but here the probability values are 98% and 95% okay so now we have seen two methods one is demergen's method second is hemerias method okay so I have already told you guys, I have given the image the software. See what we do here. This is a calculation. No, why what we're going to do is we are going to use the image the software to perform the calculations. Okay. So uh, I, I, I want you guys to click on that and open the software once. Once you open that, um, I'll show you instead of this, I'll show you a video. Okay. That will be useful for you guys. See. Uh, guys, can you please let me know whether the video is playing playing properly? Yes, sir. The video is playing, sir. Okay, okay, done. Sir, See. I hope the video does not have audio in it. No, no, no. There is no audio. I'll explain. Okay. The video doesn't have any audio, so I'll be explaining it. Okay. So, so you can see here on the top right corner, I have the you know, software open. Okay. The first step, see, you can uh, you can drag on the image directly onto the uh, okay software, so it will automatically open. Okay. So once you do that, what we need to do is, so what we are doing here is we are basically analyzing the maturity of the third molar. Okay. So what we what we what we now what we need to do now is that we need to do the measurements. That is the uh, apical, I mean, uh, width of the mesial root and the width of the digital root as well as the tooth length. Okay, so that we need to do. So now we have three eight, both three eight and four eight are present. Okay, but in this scenario, I decided to, to go with four eight, right? Because if you look into the three eight, it's not clearly visible. Okay, it's slightly rotated, and it's difficult for us to mark out. I mean, make out the landmarks here. So that's the reason. And and literature has suggested that there is no difference in the maturation between the right and left third molars. So you can proceed with any of the teeth. Okay. So in this scenario, I decided to go with the forehead, that is lower right third molars. Okay. See, uh, we have on your keypads, we have plus and minus um, buttons there. Now, so you can, based on your comfort, you can by pressing the plus button you can zoom in the way zoom in the image and you can zoom out the way i mean image based on your convenience okay so once you do that once you are okay you know with the image size all you need to do is if you look into the software on the upper right corner there is a stride tool that is a stride and there is an okay uh, fifth button from the right side that is stride tool you need to select that so because that that option allows us to do the linear measurements okay once you click on that come to the molar, come to the major root, just drag on from one end to another. Okay, just a minute. So you need to drag on from one end to another. So once I once the mark the, you know, apical width of the major root, what I did was I clicked, I mean, you need to click control plus M. Okay, what it will do is it will give the measurements so you will get a pop-up okay that is called you know when in that pop-up you can see the measurement values so you know in, in order to get this pop once you draw the line what you need to do is you need to click Control plus m m for measurement okay so once you do that there will be a pop-up that is showing the results okay so in that pop-up you can see the length measurement so per this whatever the line i have drawn here it is 11.31 pixels okay because the image is in pixels it is not centimeters 
see you need to look here what you need to look here is that i have not set any scale i am doing the measurements as it is okay so whatever the line i have drawn the apical width of this is 11.31 okay you need to continue with the digital root also i'll show once you draw that control control plus m you will get the value here that is 20.12 that is the apical width of digital root and you need to perform the measurement see always you need to start from the highest cusp tip okay so highest cusp tip to the uh, apical end of the root so you need to do that and once you do that click control plus m it will give the value that is the you know that is the length of the tooth now you have all the three measurements that is needed to calculate the third molar maturity index value that is tm value okay so once you have this uh, i told you now i have given an excel sheet that is calculations so open that excel sheet in that we have a page called third page in the lower bottom that is saying tmm you just need to open that i'll show you this so you need to open that excel sheet See in that Excel sheet, you can see I already, you know, uh, entered the values here. See the Excel sheet says width values that is mutual root width and distal root width. The length once you re once you replace the values in these three columns, it will automatically calculate the TMM that is third molar maturity index. Okay, I'll show you guys. See I am entering the mutual root value here that is eleven point three one, and I'm entering the values of uh, distal root that is twenty point one two. And I'm entering the length value that is 116.1. So it will automatically calculate. Okay, because see, you can see here I have given the formula that is C5 plus D5 by E5. C5 stands for the mutual root width, D5 stands for the digital root width, and E5 that is E column and fifth row that is 116.1. So I've got the TMM value of 0 0.27. Okay, see here you can see separate for males and females. See. Once the TMM value is here, this TMM value automatically replaces into the formula. See here. Once you click on that thing, see you can see the formula. Okay. In the formula, you can see F5. F5 stands for the TMM value. So this value will be automatically replaced into the formula and will automatically get the age of the individual. For example, if the OPG belongs to the male subject, the age of the male subject is 16.8 years with a range between 15.26 to 18.34 because I said that my formula has an error rate of plus or minus 1.54 years. Okay. So if you do that, you will be getting age. Okay. See 16.8. See based on the third molar maturity index, uh, based on, see, when I demand, uh, I'll let you guys just a minute. So that is how we do estimate the age based on Chemerius method. Okay. So open the image software, drag the, uh, then open the OPG and uh, you can, you can, uh, you, based on your convenience, you can zoom in the image to the third molar. You need to perform measure root width. You need to select the strike tool first. After selecting the strike tool, you need to measure or you need to draw a line uh, from end to end of the measure root. So after that, click Control plus M, M for measurement. Okay, you will get the value, length value. Repeat the same for all three measurements. Once you have all three measurements, open the uh, you know, Excel sheet, replace the values. Automatically, you will get the age of the individual. Okay. Hope you guys understood. No? Shall I move on to the next slide? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, um, one of the advantages uh, of this you know, of my method is that, um, see, one, one minute. Yeah. See, if you see here, like I said, um, in my method, we are answering the questions with by calculating, by doing TMM value alone, okay? Because see, once I have this TMM value, it will get replaced here and you will be getting the age of the individual. Okay. That answers the first question. Okay. And to answer the second question, that is the age of majority that is 18 years. What we need to do here is see, you need to look into the TMM value. 
in this particular case the tmm value is 0.27 okay so i said before there is a cutoff value that is 0.08 when the cutoff when when the obtained tm value is less than 0.08 then there is high probability that the subject is a major but in this case the obtained tmm value is 0.27 and this 0.27 is greater than 0.08 so that indicates that in this particular case the probability of the subject to be a minor is more okay and if this particular person is a male subject i am 95% sure that the subject is a minor and if this subject is a female i am 98% sure that this subject is a you know is a minor okay so that see the simplicity of this method is that just by using the tmm value just by doing the tmm values or measurements you can answer both the questions that is estimating the age of the individual at the same time predicting the probability of the individual to be a major or a minor okay um if you all uh, if you all understood this uh, let's let's do an example okay um but i want you guys to uh, respond after doing this okay see now you have uh, now we learned about the emergence method of age estimation and second thing is uh, kemirer's method of age estimation what you need to do is that in the kemirer's method you need to look into the development of all the eight teeth you need to give stages you need to give scores after getting the scores you will be getting the age of the subject and you need to tell me the probability of the child to be a major or minor based on the kemirer's stages whether it is if it is in the stage h or if it is in stage g okay you need to determine that and based on my method that is estibella method what you need to do is you need to do metric analysis that is uh, you need to measure the mesial root apical width distal root apical width and the length of the tooth and you will be obtain the tmm value see basically you don't need to do any calculations okay you just need to use the excel sheet that i have given it automatically do the calculations see what you need to do as what you need to do here as an expert is that you need to do correct stages using the emergence method and you need to do correct calculations calculations in the sense measurements you need to measure properly from the end to end okay you need to make out those landmarks so that is important here okay and the and the and the excel automatically do the measurements and it will give the output okay so i have given two examples let's do one example here because it's we are it's already 9:15 so let's do first example it is uh we are estimating the age of 18 years okay let's imagine a police border juvenile who is a male okay to you for the purpose of age estimation okay and the juvenile basically the case is that he was involved in a fight that resulted in threatening life threatening injuries to the victim so now they wanted to know whether the child is a major or a minor what they wanted what is the age of the child and what is the probability of the child to be a major or a minor and it was found that the child is having an other card okay so we know that usually police don't believe in that other because in india anything is possible okay fraud is most common thing okay so they wanted a proper certificate so now it is your duty to do the age estimation in this subject so after interoral examination you found that first thing what we do is when we come when we get a case to us what we do is we do a proper interoral examination okay that's the basic thing because we wanted to see whether there are any internal injuries there and what are the teeth missing any teeth are missing so we will do that that's the basic procedure okay after uh, after doing the intraoral examination we came to know that all the seven uh, there are uh, no third molars there in the oral cavity okay all the third molars are missing and what we did was we send it we send the child for an i mean radiograph okay we sent the child for a radiograph and we got the radiograph okay see i have given you guys uh, four opgs you can open opg number 1 okay that is case one opg see this is the opg um see now what you need to do is open the excel sheet see this is a male subject okay so use the demergen values you know that column of demergen male uh, page so you need to determine into what to see you what's the advantage here is that we are looking into the age estimation of a child who is falling into the bracket age brackets of 16 to 19 or 20 years okay so we all know that by the time all the seven teeth are finished except third molar so when you are doing age estimation using the emergen you can happily proceed by giving stage number 9 for all the seven teeth from central to 
second molar okay that is fixed what's important here for you is that you need to determine the stage of the third molar so you can see you it's it's your expertise comes into the role here okay you need to determine whether it is stage f stage e or stage f or stage g okay see because like i said demergence one of the negative future with demergence is it's a subjectivity method okay so for some people it might look like stage e some people it might look like stage f for some people it might look like stage c definitely it is not stage h because the apex is still open so let me know what is the age of the child using demergence method and what is the age of the child using chemiris method so i will give you guys 5 minutes of time and please let me know and uh, you can type your answers in the chat box i'm more than happy to see hope you all understood participant please do the activity and let us know your answers open open the case of first opg that is case 1 and then uh, just what you need to do is when you are doing demergence method determine the stage of the third molar once you determine the stage of the third molar because 31 to 37 all are finished that means they are all in stage 9 so you need to enter the stage scores accordingly and you need to determine the stage of the third molar whether it is into stage 7 or 8 or 9 okay so once you decide that enter the score accordingly the excel sheet automatically gives the age okay and also do the same i mean then use the chemiris method measure the width of the apical roots of mesial and distal do the length measurements and let me know the age of the individual so i want you guys to let me know what's your output what's your result participants i hope you are doing the activity that sir has told you to do please give your response quickly yes or no if you are doing this or not yes because we are waiting for your response right i wonder whether it is if anyone is there or not 
they are sir they are responding i think praveen has uh, put his message like s okay that's good yeah. so are you able to do that you can use your mic if you want to interact Right, Praveen. If you want to interact, you can just unmute yourself and interact with sir. Uh, Praveen, your voice is not audible if you are speaking. So it's now audible. Yes, now it is audible. I am doing a calculation. Uh, please wait. Sure, sure, sure. We request everyone to be kindly active throughout the workshop. There's one answer in the chat box. Okay. Uh, it's Dr. Shivya who has answered TMM is 0 0.265-8625. Okay. And uh, she's saying that the probability of the individual is a minor. Okay. Then what is the age of the individual? I mean, you have given, you have answered the second question, Shivya. And uh, what, what's, the, what's the answer for the first question? What's the age of the individual? Give me the range. Probably the, the Excel sheet has already given the range, you know. You just type it here. And what is the age you are getting using the emergence method? So 16.83 plus or minus 1.54 years. Okay. So she responded that uh, the age is 16.8395. Yeah, 83 uh, yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. Ishan Sentival is responding with his answer. Age is 17.059. Okay. Okay, so yeah. range is 15.2995281 to 18.379. Okay. As per Shuya. Yeah. So I believe this, uh, Shrivya, I believe you have given this age based on Kemi, I mean, my formula, right? That is third molar maturity index. Yes, sir. Okay. So what about the emergence method, Shivya? So what do you feel? Okay, what into what stage the third molar is? Is it into seven, eight, or nine? Seven. So I mean I'm asking you, you're saying seven? Yeah, seven. Okay. So if you, if you put the values scores related to stage seven for third molar, what is the age you are getting? Using the images method? I haven't done that yet, actually. Okay, okay. But you have some idea now how to calculate the age using the images. I have an idea. I'll just try to do it. Yeah, okay. So we have uh, another answer from Anuja 16.69. Okay. See, when you guys type the answer, just put the method in the bracket, okay? 16.69 years based on what method? Because we are, we are using two different methods here. One is a subjective method, that is the images. See, I just want, why I wanted to do the two methods is because I wanted you guys to 
uh, you know let you guys uh, understand the variation you will be getting when you use the subjective method and the objective method okay that's the reason i actually used two methods Yes, Praveen, your voice is not audible if you are saying something. I'm having a doubt regarding the stage of Mona. Uh, uh-huh. What is that? I think it's a stage six. Stage six. Stage six. Okay, if you if you feel it is stage six, you can proceed giving stage six, and let me know what's the age accordingly. Okay, sir. So Anuvia, are you doing? Uh, are you done with both the methods, Anuvia and Shrivia? It's okay. You can answer. Okay, whether it's right or wrong, that is fine. We just what we what important is that we interact. Okay, so that I understood that you are going in a right track. You are not confused. That's that's what I want. Okay. So, what stage you have given for uh, third molar anuhya? Whether it is stage seven or eight, six, seven, eight. Five. You have given. Okay. And what what what's the age based on Kamerian's method or my formula? You have got. Praveen, you have got the median using the emergence, you've got 17.35. Okay, and you have given stage number six, right? Okay. And you have already put your values related to chemerians. Using chemerians, you've got 16.7. Uh, 
seven something, no? See, okay. I assume I've got few responses that I'm happy. So basically, um, if you ask me, in this particular case, the actual age of the individual is 16.85 years. This is the actual age of the individual, okay? The actual age of the subject is 16.85 years, okay? So, I think few have, uh, most of you have got, when you use Camarius method, you have got my formula, you have got somewhere between 16.5 and 17.05. Okay. And when you use, I think uh, all the TMM values are approximately around 0 0.25, that indicates the individual is a minor. Actually, the, the individual is a minor and the age is 16.85 years, okay. And using the images method, uh, Previn has got somewhere around 17.35. Okay. See, basically, you can see, you can now, you do understand, okay, probably you have got some idea uh, what, what method is confusing you guys here and what is easy for us to apply. Okay. Personally, awesome. So, yeah. So when it comes to demergence, it is an easiest method. I'm not saying it is a difficult method, but see now within the three of you got, I've got two different responses. Like, you know, someone said stage five, some said stage six. Okay. So that sort of confusion, you know, leads us to an error of plus or minus one year, one, one to two years. Okay. So that because demergence methods, like I said, demergence methods includes subjectivity. Okay. And subjectivity make us uh, obviously leads to run inter observer variations. Okay, that's what happened here. If you ask me personally, I believe that that is stage seven. Oh, sorry, I believe that is stage seven. If you personally ask me that, I believe that is stage seven. Usually, when we go stage eight, is that when both the walls of the roots are parallel to each other. So this is a funnel shaped opening. If you look into the third molar, three a distal root. It is a funnel shaped opening is there. Okay. And also in the distal root of four eight also. See, usually in stage seven, that funnel roots will be seen. Once it is into the stage eight, what will do it, what will happen is that it will automatically the walls will become parallel. Okay. The difference between stage eight and stage nine is the open apices. That's it. See, when one one other problem with stage one, another problem with the images method is that. See, obviously we have these angulation errors will be there, okay? Because I believe why uh, Anushya, Anushya feels that this is stage five is because in one point it looks like the root is, the, the length of the root is smaller than the length of the crown, okay? Because it, here you can, see, you can see that the root is slightly tilted and because of that reason it is giving that, uh, that you know, that opinion of stage five, okay? But if you see, I believe that it is almost equally or little more than that. It's in my opinion. See, here what's coming, uh, what's the factor playing a big role here is the expertise or, you know, the subjective variation. Okay. So that is one big disadvantage of, you know, the emergence method when you use the emergence method. Okay. But I believe you don't have any such, uh, you know, difficulties when you use, uh, yeah, someone said the emergence 17.35. See, we are getting overestimation when you use demergence method, okay? See, that is the reason I always see, I always prefer to follow my own formula because it is giving uh, the reliable results as well, you know, whatever the error we are getting is not, is actually within the range, okay? And we can eliminate that element of subjectivity when you use Camarius third molar maturity index, okay? That is how, so with this, with this exercise, I believe you guys understood, okay? How do we estimate the age of a child and how to predict the probability of the child to be a major or a minor? Okay. So that answers the first question that is about medical legal importance of 18 years. Okay. So I have given another example also. If whenever you have time, because uh, we are already running, running out of time. So this is another example. You guys just need to. Okay. This is the second case, okay? Just don't do anything. Just let me know 
you guys just respond okay what is the stage of third molar here into what stage it is can you guys tell me it's okay you just express your opinion okay right sir stage number 8 pravin sir stage number 8 what about the other two it's okay it's okay whether it is wrong right or wrong i just wanted to uh, there is there is some yes. okay anu yeah madhumita saying stage 8 anu here saying stage 8 okay see one 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 important thing okay nishant is saying stage 7 okay see so when we are saying stage 7 or stage 8 if you replace that scores into the formula what we get is obviously the individual is a minor okay when you do that but the reason why i have given this opg is because see if you look closely the apices of the third molars were overlapped by inferior alveolar canal right i uh, sorry inferior alveolar canal so you can see that clearly the apices of the roots were overlapped by the inferior alveolar canal when such things happen what 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 uh, press about you know it actually misleads us basically in this particular case the apices are closed okay you believe it or not this is a completely matured third molar fully formed third molar but why it is giving you know such appearance like you know it is in stage 8 is because the apices of the roots were overlapped by the inferior alveolar canal when such thing happens all you can see is the radial lucency and it gives us the false appearance as stage 8 only but if you look into the stage into the 4 8 you might change your opinion because you can clearly see that the roots are almost in the closest i mean closing position fully formed roots see why i am saying why i have particularly kept this okay because stage estimation is not that straightforward straight forward like i said or like it look okay i see there are certain features that make us you know think twice see in this particular case uh, it is easy for us to say it is a stage 8 and the age estimation will definitely give it as the individual is under 18 years of age but in reality this is not stage 8 it is stage 9 okay and the actual age of the subject in this case is 18.65 years okay the actual age of the subject is 18.65 that means that the individual is a major okay you got my point no so whenever an opg whenever you are doing a estimation for a subject and the opg is showing a overlap of the roots with the canal you should be very careful when you are giving the stages okay because a wrong stage will leads to wrong assessment of age and it gives leads to errors okay you guys you guys got my point yeah see uh, yeah like i said staging is very important because if you do a wrong staging you leads to errors okay when it comes to age estimation we have two types of errors okay first is ethically inact type 1 errors or ethically unacceptable errors and second is type 2 or technically unacceptable errors okay so what it says is that ethical unacceptable errors are nothing but you are wrongly identifying a minor as a major okay it's not acceptable at all in reality the child is a minor he is 17 years of age but because of the age estimation method you used it was proven that the child is above 18 years of age so that is ethically unacceptable errors so you need to make sure that whatever the method you use it it gives less number of type one errors and the second error is called as technically unacceptable errors okay technically unacceptable errors are nothing but you are wrongly identifying a major as a minor okay see this is also error but it doesn't have a serious impact what we doing is we are put, we are bringing a major and uh, who has done the you know A, a, a you know any k i mean any activity and we are keeping that we are making that person as a minor okay so we have these two errors okay every every age estimation method or every you know when you are predicting the legal age thresholds we need to look into the method we need to use the method that gives less number of type 1 and type 2 errors okay so when when we look into these two errors ethical and acceptable errors are more serious because we are doing we are violating the laws of a child we are wrongly showing a minor as a major okay because of that a child will be sent to a jail and that shouldn't be happening okay so it is always important when it comes to you know while while you are using that 
method of error estimation you need to make sure you are using you, you need to use the method that is giving less number of type 1 and type 2 errors okay so the emergence method is indirectly involving the subjectivity and that leads to more number of errors okay so it is always i recommend personally i recommend based on my experience i am saying that it is always useful for us to it is always better to rely on metric methods but not on the subjective methods okay um see we have seen to predict 18 years of age till now we have seen dental maturation and we also have dental eruption also so we have given different classifications were given uh, uh based on the eruption see uh, it was given by all ji et al stage a stage b stage d and uh, literature evidence has suggested that when the third molar is in stage d of eruption then the probability of a subject to be a major is very high okay but personally i don't recommend to follow or use to eruption of third molar is because eruption is influenced by or affected by many factors like i said if the spacing is not there it won't erupt okay if there is any infection it won't erupt so there are so many factors that affects the eruption of third molars okay so never ever try to estimate the age based on the eruption of third molars okay for example if you look into my oral cavity i don't have all of my third molars erupted they are lying in the bone but if you try to estimate the age of me my age will be like 14 to 15 years that's it not more than that because i don't have any third molars so always go for maturation of the tooth but not the eruption of the tooth okay so that is how we so that is how we estimate see first thing now we know how to calculate the dental age of the individual and how to estimate how to predict the whether the subject is a major or a minor so now i believe that you guys are in a position or you guys have some idea how to predict the age of majority the same will be repeated 14 years also see for 14 years we have see for predicting 18 years we have only one tooth available that is third molars but for the prediction of 14 years we have different tooth available that is what parameters we use is maturation of the third molars we use maturation of the second molars are also we use because in some individuals the maturation of the second molars extends till 15 years so we can use second molars also and we also use the eruption of lower second molars and we use the maturation of the lower first and second premolars because in some individuals the maturation of premolars extends till 14 years okay so we use any of the combination of these parameters okay so based on these things we can estimate the age of the individual okay and we can uh, so in uh, i did a research in 2019 to answer the prediction of 14 years okay similarly the way we have a cut off value you know, for third molar maturity index of 0.08 for 18 years we also have cut off values to predict 14 years okay and that value is so in this particular research you can refer to article number 7 in this particular research i have studied the maturity of third molars as well as the maturity of second molars okay so I, I did the combination of both and my research said that if the maturity of third molar is less than 1.1 and the apical closure happened for second molar, then I'm very sure, then I'm 98% sure that the subject is a, that the male subject is above 14 years, 14 years of age and I'm 94% sure that the female subject is above 14 years of age. It's just simple, okay? Like we did for 18 years, what we do here, we do the age estimation by replacing the TMM value in the formula, you will get the age of the individual. And to predict 14 years of age, you also need to look into the maturation of second molar. So in this particular uh, category of predicting 14 years of age, we analyze the maturity of third molars as well as we analyze the maturity of second molars, okay? See, if the values are saying, these values are saying, you know, See, I have given guys, um, hope you guys, you know, just practice it, okay? This is a case. I have given, you You just look into the case example three. So what you need to do here is you need to measure uh, TMM value of second molar and you need to measure the TMM value of the third molar. And based on that, you can uh, estimate the age as well as you can predict whether the child is above or below 14 years of age, okay? So that is how we do. Similar process only. Whatever we did for third molars, for 18 years we need to do for 14 years also 
and similarly we have see i did lot of research okay i just to predict the 14 years of age i tested the cervical vertebral maturation okay i also tested the eruption of second prong, second molars as well as mandibular premolar to determine 14 years of age and i also tested the maturity of mandibular first and second molar premolars to predict 14 years of age so i i tested in every possible way to predict different age groups of medical legal importance okay so just to predict 14 years of age i did more than five research five publications okay so i have multiple data available so whenever a case comes to me i use this multiple data to predict or estimate the age of the individual okay so this is how we estimate based on the maturity of second and third molars to predict 14 years okay and lastly we have 16 years of age so like i said 16 years indicates age of criminal responsibility and we know that to predict this age group we have only third molars okay so again in 2019 i did a study i derived a cut off value to predict for 16 years of age and that cut off value is 0.293 you can refer to article number 8 okay so if the cut off value if the obtained cut off value is less than or equal to 0.293 then the probability of the subject to be greater than 16 years is very high this is just similar to that of 18 years okay for 18 years the cut off value is 0.08 and for 16 years the cut off value is 0.293 okay so if the cut off value is less than if the, if the if i test the subject and the cut off value is less than 0. Point, greater than 0. 0.293 then the probability of the subject to be less than 16 is is very high okay so and this cut off value has given the probability of 87% in males and 88% in females so whenever i give a report based on this value i'll say that i am 87% sure for males and i am 88% sure for females because the police or the judge wants that percentage how sure you are okay any value above 85% the judge is very happy if you are saying that i am 50% sure my research says that i am 50% sure or 60% sure that that means they won't accept that because if you are saying 50% sure that means you are having another 50% saying that the individual is below or may above okay so that is the importance of this probability similarly i have given another case example okay see guys i will be giving you my email id okay in the last you you can contact me okay because i am not able because we have not that much of time now so because now you understood how to do estimate age based on third molar maturity index and how can you predict based on that the legal age thresholds you have set an idea now so you do that you just practice if you have any doubt just get back to me to my email i'm always available okay so this is how so this is the value that is 0 0.293 to predict 16 years of age okay see these value these values are reliable values because i derived these values based on the research that i conducted and my research findings were sub, you know published in international journals as well because the, all the code always looks for you know the data that was published okay if your data was published in international journals they'll definitely welcome your findings okay so that's what the code wants they don't want the random data that was not published they want the data that was published which was peer reviewed okay that is what they want and we have seen now we understood how to estimate how to predict 18 years of age how to predict 16 years how to predict 14 years okay so but things are not that easy every time okay we have challenges in this semester one says challenges can you look here guys uh, if you look here how do we estimate the age or predict 18 years of age in this case so if you look here what is the what is the problem in this you know you have you got a case okay police brought a child to you and they wanted for age estimation and you you took a opg in that particular child and this is the opg of the child what are you going to do now see the main problem here is that we don't have third molars okay all the third molars are congenitally missing okay and as a forensic dentist the only two that are available for me are the third molars okay what should i do now okay there is nothing i can do all i do is i'll refer this case to forensic medicine people and ask for skeletal age estimation but but i uh, in see i started when, when i'm practicing this age estimation i i know uh, this sort of cases 
actually started increasing. Okay, so whenever I take OPG, third molars are absent. So I couldn't do anything in such cases. Then I started to research. Okay, so what what can we do? What can be done in this in such cases? What other parameters that we can look for to to estimate the age or to predict the legal age of eighteen years? Okay, so this is a this was actually a challenge that I faced. And to answer this particular challenge, I did some other research. So this is something which was given. Okay, these are the stages of root bulb visibility. Okay. So, sorry. So this was these stages. Actually, you can see the stages here. Oh, with stage zero, there are four stages. Okay. See, in each stage, with the increase in the stages, the pulp, the root bulb visibility is decreasing. Okay. So they have given this stage. This actually, this staging was given in the year of two thousand and ten. Actually, this stage was introduced to predict eighteen years and twenty one years of age. Okay, and for you to apply this staging, the molars should be fully formed. Okay, you can't apply this stage for maturing third molars. So what I did is that I applied this method in first molars and second molars to predict eighteen years of age. This is the research I did. Okay. In two thousand and twenty, so I did that in first molars, mandibular first molars, to predict eighteen years. I got good results, and I repeated the same in uh, second molars also. I got reliable results, and I repeated the same methodology in to predict fourteen years also, and to predict eight sixteen years also. See, the point is why I did this much of research is because often I am getting the cases that shows the absence of third molars. Okay. So I need, I am in a desperate need to have alternate methods. So I came to know about this and I have did research on this. So now I am in a position to answer the question. Okay, even though if the person is not having third molars, I use this research findings to answer whether the subject is above or below, fourteen years or sixteen years or eighteen years. Okay, so that is the importance of you know having your own research data. Okay, if you have your own research data, you can play along. Okay, so. That's that's the importance of legal age groups, and that's the methods you are going to follow. Okay, so basically, the what are the points to remember from my lecture is that, see, forensic age estimation is a multidisciplinary approach. Okay, it's not just the duty of a dentist or a forensic dentist. So it will be done using a combination of different disciplines, and we know that teeth is superior biological factor for age estimation because it's not influenced by nutrition or other environmental factors. Okay. And like I said, research plays a crucial role. The reason why I'm doing good number of cases with confidence is because I did research. I have so many findings in my hand, so always research. And we always see most of the people believe that publication is for the personal sake. No, publication is not for the personal sake or for not for an institution sake. It is for the discipline sake. Okay, you are promoting the discipline. So publish, do research, publish. And always, evidence-based tools may have direct impact on the admission because, like I said before, always the judge or the court people look for, you know, uh, evidence that is scientifically proven. Okay, so evidence-based tools are very, very crucial. Okay, and obviously, once your data is published in an international journal or a peer-reviewed journal, that reliability of the findings of that journal or your findings that have they have more reliability in the course. Okay. So you need to make sure that you are doing research. See, see if you guys are really interested in doing research. If you are from other parts of India but not South India, you can do whatever the research I did. Okay, because obviously there will be a difference in the development between your population and my population. Okay, so you can test the same things in your and you can come up with your own cutoff values. Okay, that that way you have to promote the discipline. Okay. So that's that why I'm going to conclude my presentation. Okay, workshop. Hope you guys all understood. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity once again. And this is my email ID. Okay, I'm always available on that. So if you guys have plan to do research, if you guys have any doubts, get back to me anytime. I'll respond to you guys. Okay, hope you guys understood. Uh, thank you so much.